I'm going to talk to you about marketing. In fact, next couple of hours, let's hit some big marketing ideas. But before we go on to that, I need to talk about Jessica. We need to talk about Jessica. <laughs> Jessica, I know that you are chewing your fingernails right now, but there is no need to. Jessica is so graciously, as a startup young business and a mum at home, has given me uh, an a really an in for you guys to see something that you will identify with and it is the most valuable lesson that she could give you all and she's done that openly so I want everyone to support her on her Facebook page and support her online because she did that unselfishly and when I asked her if I could post it she didn't flinch once she trusts me that much she went yes well she flinched a little bit <laughs> Jessica threw into the chat last Monday um, that she did not believe that it was, um, she did not believe that her market can support her as a photographer and she doesn't understand why, because she charges a lot less than Sue Bryce. So I said, well, I don't believe that, so I want you to tell me what your blocks are around money. And she said, no, seriously, it's the market I'm in and I know, break into a new market and all the rest of it. And this is where everybody disconnects from what they believe into actually taking the action to go and do it. Because there's this belief that there's something out there that's not your fault. And here it is right here. This is the bridge that you're all going to get between how do I put myself out there? How do I break into that new market? I was in exactly the same position four years ago when I moved from New Zealand to Australia. I was in that position eight years before that when I started my business in New Zealand. How do I break into the market? Well, my client base are women, and there are women everywhere, so let's look at how. So I said to Jessica, I threw it out there, Jessica came back with, no, really, it is my market. And I was like, I don't believe that, Jessica. There is a disconnect between what you're saying and what you're advertising and what you're marketing and what you believe. Let's find the block. And I said, Jessica, send me your PDF. Send me your PDF, and I will critique it. And if you're brave enough, I will show everybody else for 28 days. And this is what happened. I was sitting very quietly. I opened my email. I opened Jessica's PDF. And instantly, I saw boudoir and glamour. And I thought, OK, we didn't need both words. That's OK. She's either boudoir or glamour. I think there's a distinction. Um, that's fine. I go with glamour. She sticks with boudoir. boudoir. That's fine. I loved her logo. And then there's three little panels. This face looks warped. This face is looking off in another direction, and this woman fell asleep during her shoot. This was my initial instinct. I told Jessica this. She laughed. Then I go to the next page, and there's two tiny little shots. Neither of them are significant on the page, and it says, what is boudoir and glamour? So now we're going to get an education. Boudoir, and we'll spell it phonetically, boudoir just in case you couldn't say it, and then glamour, and then glamour. A woman's bedroom or private sitting room, charm, allure and fascination. How does this translate in photography? Boudoir photography is an intimate nature as more sensual portraits of an individual. The end result typically gives you a gift of oneself to a significant other. It helps to celebrate a woman's beauty regardless of shape or size. Boudoir is not only in the bedroom less these days, but almost anywhere you can think of. Glamour photography is a little less sexy and a little bit more romance. Think dresses, makeup and fashion, while glamour portraits still lean towards very sexy and alluring. At J. Morgan Images, these portraits are more about capturing that. I didn't read it because I was bored after I read the first two lines. All right? So I was like, no. It, that went on for the length of a Lord of the Rings movie. <laughs> And then we have a scientific equation that is the price list. A la carte options, albums, 10 sides, 20 sides come matted, prints come matted, 12 by 12, 10 by 10, we're going backwards to um, 4 by 6, custom cover instead of leather, accordion album, additional pages, calendars, DVD, additional locations, custom dinner. I stopped reading after a la carte options and I looked straight at the image which apparently was cropped incorrectly because all I could see was her mouth. Right? And then I got to here, and it starts with investment opportunities. Invest in what? This is not real estate. 
So all options come standard with professional retouching, online password, protected galleries, it just carried on. It carried on, it carried on, and then there was one image down here. So in four pages, uh, it lacked an entire communication to me in what she does. So I hit Jessica with that on Skype. And what we came up with is our next scenario was this. In your communication, you need to tell me who are you? What do you do? What are you going to give me as a, as a consumer? What is the experience that I'm going to have that I am paying for? And where is the entice in this brochure? So let's go back. Did she tell me who she is? No. Did she tell me what she does? No. Like she explains what glamour and boudoir photography is, but she never showed me or told me what she does. Does she tell me what she's selling me? No. She shows me product. I'm not buying product. I'm buying the photo shoot. And did she entice me with images? No. Okay, no on all counts, and yet information and design wise, it was actually good. Because she answered a lot of questions, and she designed it clean and simple. So to her, she can't understand why it's not working. So let's look at this. I believe that this PDF is selling an investment opportunity to nothing that I understand. Would you agree with that? Okay, so we talked about it, and I'll play this. Can we have some sound? Your PDF I can present on Creative Live on Monday, okay. and, and I'm going to tell people what my critique was. But then I'm going to show them your amazing new PDF. Okay, so you're going to do that over the next three days, and I can help you do that. So if you have any issue with it, I want you to call me. And I want you to talk to me about it. Okay. Um, secondly, I want to um, just reiterate that as soon as we start, we get your images and we're going to put your personal profile on there, we're going to start selling Jessica instead of money. It's a little weird to be like putting my picture up on something. Do you that think? Time. Yeah. But I you're trying like to people. you're trying to sell you. You're trying to sell you as a, as a business owner, as a photographer, as a woman with children, as a beautiful woman. You're trying to sell all of those things and the most authentic person you could ever use in your own advertising is you. So um, not only is that the most important part, secondly, you're trying to sell me money and I want to I wanna know what you've got to offer me and you haven't once told me what you offer me. You haven't once showed me a shoot, a behind the scenes, a before and after. You haven't once told me what you're going to do for me. In fact, you had the audacity to give me two full pages on what you cost and you didn't once tell me what you sell. And when you list images and words and boxes, that means nothing to me. I want to know what you're giving me and I want to know who you are. And so I cannot wait to show your new PDF and I cannot wait to see how many bookings you get from it. So I'll get you those in the next hour. You're going to put that together and you're going to show me, send me a couple of beautiful photos of you. And I want a very basic bio. Age, children, married for, been a photographer for, love boudoir, glamour. And I want to know, are you more boudoir or are you more glamour? More boudoir. Okay, so then we're going to brand you as Jay Morgan, um, boudoir. And you're yes. going to... And we're going to take away all those French explanations and translations on your price list. Okay? <laughs> okay. Um, and now, from now on, you're going to start selling me uh, Jessica instead of selling me investment opportunities. Okay. I emailed you a picture. It's one of my friends, so it has her logo, and I just emailed her mm -hmm. to ask for uh, if I can use it. Cool. It's really uh, small at the bottom. So. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, you can. Take the logo off for your PDF and just put a credit, photo credit underneath. So put photo credit, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then um, that goes on your PDF with her photo credit. So they know that you didn't take your own photograph. So it's okay to photo credit another photographer. And, um, and then 
whoever sees that sees that your own image is on there and that's really really important I look forward to seeing it um, over the next two days let's redesign your PDF so I can put it up and show everybody the, the big shift that's coming in terms with how you are marketing yourself um, I'm telling you right now Jessica your PDF was so misaligned with who you are that there is no way anybody would have booked off that I'm surprised you got any bookings off that when you turn that around you're going to be surprised at how much because you have got all the goods you were just speaking to the wrong part and I know that your need to make money was strong but it was overshadowing your desire to give service to take photographs you were trying to sell me investment opportunities and you weren't trying to sell me beautiful photographs and it's about me not you getting money okay so when I shift that when somebody's here like it's not it's not about that at all I know so why would you try and attract that totally so remember I listen to language and I listen to what people say I don't care what people tell me I care what the way they say it and you were reeking of of asking for money instead of selling photography and I'm so glad that you got the opportunity to see it from my point of view because when we redesign it you get the opportunity to change the way you say it and you get the opportunity to attract something way different which is more authentic to you okay and I can't wait to see you do this and then my friend you owe me dinner that's fine yeah all right, and a bottle of Take wine. Take you out on a date anytime. <laughs> I'll pluck my eyebrows. <laughs> nice talking to you. I'll talk to you over the weekend. All right. All right, darling. Have a good weekend. You too. So what a beautiful girl she is, and what a beautiful girl to not be in any part of her advertising. And her, there was nothing authentic about her um, PDF. Any from the audience, can I just go back to that? And I know that Jessica's in our chat, and I know that she'll be getting a lot of support right now. So right now, is there anybody that's got anything? I would like to hear something positive about this PDF. Okay, so just because I slammed it down, I told her what was wrong with it in my eyes, but there were positive aspects to it. Is anybody, did anybody look at that and go, well, that looks like mine and I wouldn't have been quite so hard? Or did anybody not agree with me? Anybody online? Did anybody not agree when I said that this PDF is trying to sell me money and it is not trying to sell me a photo shoot? Now, when I compare this to my PDF, doesn't it stand to reason that mine is selling a photo shoot? Okay, because mine's all about images, less about words, all about the photographs, full page, double bleed. You know, really, it's about the before and after. So when you look at this, is that, was that all about the a la carte options, the investment opportunity, and the boudoir, what is boudoir and glamour, instead of this is what I do, to me, just tried to sell me money. Microphone there, yeah? Yeah, I just wanted to um, say that I definitely, I was impressed by how she created it, and I think that, I know when I first started out, I started looking at all of these websites, and she was copying, you could tell that she was copying the standard, and you're shattering the standard, which is amazing, but I think that she, if, if compared with a million photographers online, it would be really similar, which is really sad. It would be similar. Well, it's not sad because when an industry standard becomes an industry standard, we watermark our logo, okay? We put colored borders in, we go double shot, one color, two, and, and actually she's used three fonts, which is a, a design flaw, which most people do. In fact, one, two, three, four, five fonts, four fonts, five, there is five on that page. Um, two is the max, and then she has boxed her images. So she's boxed in her images instead of making full bleed designs, which by the way, magazines have been doing full bleed designs for 15 years, so why aren't we doing them? We are modern contemporary designers. Mm -hmm. That's why my design looks more magazine. Okay, aside from how it looks, because I actually thought the design was standard and it was actually better than normal. Okay, absolutely gave her props for that gave her big props for the logo. 
logo is outstanding. I don't have a logo. Mine is just Bryce and Palantino. I like to keep it um, simple, but that, I really like that. Okay, what it was was its communication for me was just completely misaligned. This completely, it got better. And I've got to show you this because Jessica, I don't know if Jessica either knows that I have this, but somebody copied out of the chat uh, a comment that Jessica made while I was live. And so I didn't see the comments because I don't get to read them. And um, they sent it to me on email. And I just want to talk about this. She wrote in the chat, I am convinced it's the market I am currently and not knowing how to break out into a market that I am not involved in. Yes, I know, get involved with the market to break into, but how? So Jessica believes that if she takes a marketing course and I tell her how to break into that market, that her answers will be given to her, her problem will be solved. But her problem is back here and how she's communicating what she's selling. Okay, I have been nagging you all for 12 months, 13 months now, to create a PDF for your business that accurately communicates what you do. I have asked for you to do three things. Make it image driven, show don't tell. Make it communicate easily what you do behind the scenes and make it simple. That PDF breaks all three of my rules and so do most of you that are sending PDFs to me. What's it going to take for you to get that? Let's look at how we can do it. My feelings, and this is what happened when I challenged her about money. My feelings on money, I am broke, and maybe that makes me attract the same type of people. The people who want money but don't have it already. Trying to find my roadblock here, folks. I don't fear being successful, I crave it. So in being broke and craving, she's craving money because that's what you do when you're broke. And when you crave money, you come from a place of pitching for money instead of pitching for service, value, product, and experience. And yet everything about Jessica, her demeanor, her gentleness, her instant friendliness, her love of what she does tells me that she makes it about the shoot when they're there, but everything in her PDF communicates, I'm broke and I need money and it's just focused on me getting money. Did anybody else feel like that? Does anybody else feel like that now that I'm saying it and you're seeing it? Is anybody else thinking of their own PDF and how it communicates? I think that what Jessica did, I think is something that um, it's easy to do, it's easier to do, to focus on the money, because if you are so worried about it, you figure if I put it out there right there, they see it, they know, when they come to me, I don't have to worry about any of that, they already know what they have to pay me, they already this. agreed to pay me. This is my big problem. I did the same thing. I made it first about the money and repelled it. Then I switched in the complete opposite and put no price on and made it about the experience. And then people were coming in going, what, how much? And I was hiding the money. So you can go both ways there and screw it up for yourself instead of being, I give a great service, I receive well for it. I give a great service, I receive this much for it. It's a 50-50, okay, very, very important. Kenna? Well, just what I was gonna say, because there's a lot of discussion going on in the chat room and Jessica is in there as well and says thank you to Sue, of course, and everybody else. But what um, people are commenting on when you asked about, you know, what did you like about Jessica's PDF? And the most resounding thing was that she actually has one. Yes. <laughs> and that she's actually Jessica. done it. Because You're already ahead of the crowd. People, um, people are already, I have to create a PDF, but I'm scared. That was Gina Marie photography. Um, and just, again, Okay, well, let's go. Look at this. So I take her logo and I go, make that your front page. By the way, this is about Jessica redesigning it. I did not design her PDF. I just told her what I just told you. So she came back with this because I felt that this was really vital, that she needed to speak from Jessica. I asked her to tell me who she was and why she liked it. The photograph she sent me was her in a pink tutu, shot by another photographer, excellently well executed shot, but too cute. 
and she looked about 18 and, her, and I just went, you can't have that as your profile. So Jessica got her husband to photograph her profile shot that morning, Saturday morning, and emailed it to me and I picked my favourite one and it was that one. And it was perfect. She's beautiful. But what I love about her is, yes, she looks young. And the cool thing about her is she is the mother of two children and she's 29 years old. So at first glance, you might think, oh, she's 20. But then you realize she's a wife and a mother. And her description and her beautiful little logo signing off down there was, I am Jessica Adler, boudoir photographer. Bam. Much better than boudoir, glamour you know, translate this into photography. I am Jessica Adler, it's Adler, am I saying it right, Adler, Adler? Um, boudoir photographer, bam, I love that. I mean, how confident is that? Look at this beautiful woman. I am Jessica Adler, boudoir photographer. I'm 29 years old, a wife, a mum of two, a dreamer, a rebel, and an excellent storyteller. That is an elevator pitch. Okay, I have a passion for finding the beauty in others and helping them see it too. Bam, none of that came from me. Would you like to have beautiful photographs of yourself to share with the person who loves you and feel gorgeous, empowered and pampered? Question mark. Book now for a makeover and boudoir photo shoot collection start at $800, Jessica Adler. Okay, what I love about this, I am boudoir photographer, 29 years old, mother of two, wife, dreamer, storyteller. What I love is to find the beauty in others. Would you like to have beautiful photographs? What's the one thing we want? Beautiful photographs. She's answering my question. I want beautiful photographs. It just so happens I take beautiful photographs. That's what that question says. This is page two. Okay, so we go simplicity, information. Now she's got to entice me. So she's going to put a full bleed image up and then she's going to put another one up but instead of just making it images she's put to love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. Oscar Wilde. And how beautiful that she would choose to love oneself not to be beautiful enough that somebody else would love you but to love yourself, to honour yourself, to have your own photo shoot. She's enticing me with images and then she's showing me the experience. And it's even called the experience. Oh, this is what I'm going to experience. You arrive at the studio, you meet your hair and makeup artist, and it shows me what's going to happen through my day. Those are the only words on there. Entice, price. She's gone with small, medium, and large. She's still working through these packages. These were not set in stone. She did this very early Saturday morning. Her and I were Skyping together so we could get this up. Her now PDF now looks like this. Is that not 500 times better? Okay, talk to me, why? What do you like about it? What's missing from it? What would you like to see more of? What would you like to see more of and how can she make that better? Has she improved her PDF? Do you think she's changed her communication? Okay, speak to me. So I just want to let you know that Jessica is on fire now. <laughs> And she said that she has, basically, this has made her rethink everything, and she's going to go and change pretty much every part of her, any, anything associated with her business, she wants to re revamp and redo. So how I learned about this communication, two ways. If I was, I never got bored reading that. I went mm -hmm. like this, clever, 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 oh, this girl's clever. Because I got to, I'm 29, Jessica Boudoir photographer, bam. That's it. I'm 29 years old, a wife, a mother, a dreamer, a rebel, an excellent storyteller. Great, didn't waffle on. I have a passion for finding the beauty in others and helping them see it too. Double-edged sword there. Would you like to have beautiful photographs of yourself to share with the person who loves you? The person who loves you. So you get boudoir photography to show your partner and that's the person who loves you. This is about, so she's saying doing it, do it for him, but do it for yourself. Do it for him because you love yourself. I love that flip. Book now for a makeover and boudoir photo shoot. Collection started at $800. Bam, that was enough. And that that's her. And oh, I love that. Oh, that just spoke volumes to me. Okay, volumes, volumes. I just want to say Michael P. in the lounge had said 
you know, that this is really tough love, but we all need it. So, you know, it is that. tough love. And um, I'll tell you something. Jessica could go back to that old PDF and call me a bitch. And that's fine. I I'll do that. I, I can sit with that. But remember the one thing when you are doing something, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So the choice would be that she doesn't have to stick with what I see was her faults, but she needs to open a dialogue with either a client, people around her, a friend, another mentor, and say, where am I going wrong? Not, I am in a market that is not supporting me. Where am I going wrong? I'm going wrong. She can do whatever she wants from here on in. All I've given her is my opinion, and my opinion is not the be all and end all. I am only two things, a business owner of a successful business and a consumer. And that last PDF made me go yuck, and this PDF made me go yay. All right, and so, it's about communicating really simply what I'm getting out of this. I'm the client, you're the photographer, okay? I know that you want to get paid, but what are you getting paid for? What are you getting paid for? I know you all want money, but what are you giving me in order for me to give you the money? I'm not gonna give you my money unless you tell me what I'm getting. Okay? I don't just walk into BCBG and drop a couple of hundred dollars. They actually give me something. And I leave with it. Okay, that's consumers. So I, I want, it's so important. Any other feedback? I, I can't stop talking about it. So. I have a question. Sure. Um, with regards to just generally the kind of because you're designing your PDF right now, aren't you, Susan yes, Roderick? So, I and am. I still haven't seen it yet, but no, gosh, I wait with bated breath for that Skype call. I was waiting for this moment to happen. <laughs> you're going pink. <laughs> so the question is, you know, in marketing in general, usually there's an overall kind of you're missing something or you're lacking something. So yes. I will, I will add or I will give that back to you. Do you recommend in the words that you choose? kind of making people feel like they're at a deficit and that you're going to fill that? Okay, I think it's this simple. Yes, they are at a deficit. The, the, the ethos of marketing is that you're going to solve my problem. You're going to answer my question, solve my problem, and fill a desire within me. And the truth is, is at the end of the day, you do not know what that is. I think our, our basic is everybody gets a beautiful photograph. Isn't that what we all want? Look and feel like a supermodel. Be pampered for a day. Have images that last a lifetime. Be seen in images for your children. Uh, you're someone that I love. I want to capture you for all time. You know, think of what it is that you think you sell and market that. But don't market me money and albums and numbers because I'm not interested. I don't buy that. I buy the dream, I buy the transformation, I buy the experience, I buy the belief that you're going to give me what I want. So whatever you think you're giving, you know, um, for a lot of boudoir and glamour photographers, their desire is to give with connection. Wouldn't you agree with that? To give that connection of a beautiful photograph where you feel incredible, it's not really about a spa day. I don't really go with the pamper day. I go more for the transformation. I'm more about the before and after than the spa day because I'm not transforming you for one day. You know, I go to, I'm not a big spa person because I'm a practical girl. And even though, you know, I like to spend money on shoes and stuff, I spent $125 on a massage and I enjoyed it while I was there, but I kind of leave feeling oily. And then you go and have a shower and then it's like later on that day you're back on Photoshop and your shoulder jams up again and you're like, well that was $125 I'm never getting back and I'm sure the experience was really wonderful while you were there, but it's not something I take away. I would rather get my hair blown out for $60 and leave with gorgeous hair for four days. That's a result and not only that, that not only produces a result for me, I, I, for me getting my head massage is like, you could massage my head, I'll just follow you home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just love my hair being played with. And so, you know, that to me is what I want. 
So I kind of think if you market it as a pamper day, people get over the pamper real fast, but they don't ever get over the transformation. Because the transformation is like, boom, the best part. We all desire to be better, better photographers. We all desire to be better mothers, to be better sisters, friends, people, human beings. We desire to be thinner, prettier, younger. Everything in our marketing is a desire to be something, to be transformed, to be captured, to be immortalized beautifully in a photograph. That's what you're selling. Microphones? And when you're talking about the transformation, um, for me, I shoot high school girls. Um, predominantly and so the idea how, how do I portray the before without um, you know sabotaging you know that age group is obviously very fragile you have to be careful how I wouldn't do the before and after with, with teenage girls no I would sell the experience of being a princess for a day a supermodel for a day or a superstar for a day okay but for them they the experience is they're quite happy with no makeup on and a bun you know, for them it's not the hair and makeup it's the dresses yeah, have you noticed with the senior shoots, the dresses they turn up with? Holy cow. And these girls turn up with six, seven ball gowns. And they're like just little um, Forever 21 ones, but like sparkly dresses, little pink dresses, cheap ones that just look incredible. That's where they want to be. They want to be in the whole photo shoot experience. I had a photo shoot. Okay, it's the 30-year-old woman that's like, oh my God, I got the full transformation. The, the 16, 17-year-old, she just wants the shoot. You sell the shoot to her. So Jessica's PDF is transforming even as we speak. Jessica had an hour to put that together really? after after my critique. Yeah, she did it on Saturday morning. She, her husband photographed her and she sent me back the words so fast and even managed to text me and say, I'm going to a kid's birthday party, I'm not by my computer. So she managed to do all of that and take the kids to a birthday party. So, I mean, she knocked that out and then she said, she didn't, she did not talk to me about packages. I said, no, I don't want you to, I don't want to critique it again. I just want you to do the first critique and come back with what you do. So she did that and now she's going to evolve it even more. So can I just make it really clear before we finish? Okay, the marketing, let's make this really simple, real 101. Marketing is the ability to share it, what you do, okay? What will get in your way is fear, value, and confidence. Okay, she has a fear around money, she has a fear around valuing her product, and she didn't have the confidence to even put herself in her own advertising. However, marketing is the ability to share it. Now, I'm giving you the opportunity to create, create a marketing brochure for your studio free on Photoshop. You just do it yourself. We've given you templates, I've showed you designs, Jessica's watched my creative live, she still didn't do it. What's it gonna take today to get you to nail this? Full bleed, show me what you sell. Your shooting session is where you educate, you show your product and you give service. You don't need to do that in your PDF. You do not need to do it. What you need to do is get her in first. Then you have your viewing, your sales session and this Lack of education will stop you from selling and any blocks you have around money and value will stop you from selling. These are all things that are gonna get in your way. So let's talk about 50 ways to market your business when we come back. But the first thing I want you to do when you leave today is this is called 50-50. I want you to call a photographer friend. Susan Roderick can call me. All right, she's just shot behind the scenes for me for the last two months. So I'm gonna go and do the same for her. Now I'm quite good. And that's one of the things that you get when you know another photographer and everybody does, you all know a photographer. You go and shoot for them, they come and shoot for you. I want you to show behind the scenes Okay, I want you to show the makeup, maybe even a little bit of video footage if you've got show reels and you're moving towards that. Show you shooting. I want you to feel very comfortable with what you look like beh from behind when you're shooting because it's going to be quite confronting for you. 
okay? I remember the first time I saw myself like this from behind and I went, Who is th who's that? <laughs> 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 you don't get to see that perspective very much. It's shocking. Prepare yourself. <laughs> also, think about how you look. When I shoot, I shoot with no shoes on and my hair up in a bun and no makeup on. Not going to fly for the behind the scenes. Um, so I wore my hair down throughout the whole 28 days. It was very difficult to shoot with my hair down. But, you know, think about it. Tell them you don't want photographs where your bum is the center of the image. Your bum goes off to the left. It's more of a side on, cat's eye, bird's eye view, whatever cat's eye come up, down, up, under, from the floor. But for God's sakes, get some behind the scenes footage. Then show the before shot, show the makeover, all in stills. You're a stills photographer. You have this incredible ability to take photos. Take behind the scenes with somebody else, return the favor to them, and then make a slideshow and put it on YouTube and then link tag words to a funky track that you bought off Triple Scoop for like $40 to a funky track from the Sue Bryce collection and it's about glamour photography. Put a logo in there and a phone number and then tag glamour photography before and after, makeover, glamour style. Then you're competing on the second biggest search engine on the planet. Then go and make a PDF out of it. How do you make a PDF? Open it in Photoshop, flatten the layer, save it as a JPEG, open it in Bridge, select all the JPEGs, output as a PDF. Trust me, you'll work it out. Go on in bed with Sue. Go on in bed with Sue and ask everybody in there because I can't answer 700 emails tomorrow, but I bet you everybody else will help you because that community has been incredible. Get that PDF out now to every single client. Make sure it communicates what you are, what you sell, what you do, how much you are, but make sure it communicates with imagery. You have a week. And if you don't, Know that today, tens of thousands of photographers around the world are ringing a friend in the lunch break right now to book the behind the scenes, and you're the one that's going to be missing out. Yes, Jessica had a shitty PDF, but she had a PDF, and now she has an awesome one, and she's going to rock it. We're going to come back, and we're going to market ourselves. We're going to talk about marketing. We're going to talk about communicating. And I need you to understand what that communication is. And I need you to understand how you can just make it so simple. And this is the first contact most people will have to your style, your brand, and your price because they've already seen your website. And if they're emailing you or calling you, they want to book a shoot. You're the only one getting in the way from allowing them to do it. This is so easy to update instead of changing your website. You can leave your website all year and change your PDF monthly. And then take your 50-50 friend, critique both of your PDFs together until both of you are communicating visually and beautifully, openly and effectively what it is you are selling. Because you all want money, but what are you giving me to get paid? Instantly what happens is I stopped and you all came up and either asked a question about the PDF talked about the PDF or said, could you critique my PDF? Okay, Jessica was very lucky in the sense that she riled me up last Monday. Don't think by riling me up, I'm going to critique your PDF. <laughs> I cannot critique PDFs. I, I would love to, but you see, I'm a portrait photographer. Okay, so I'm not a PDF critiquer or an educator full time. I shoot, I run a business. And when I stop talking on Creative Live, I go back to work tomorrow. And that's how it happens for me. So I would love nothing more than to critique all of your PDFs and I'm unable to do that. So what I will do is in the workbook, which is the workbook is all those images that you saw with bullet points on how to work through each challenge. On the 29th bonus challenge, which is here, let me just take you through, and that is the one where you saw the beautiful black and white PDF when I talk about the folio. When I get to the end of this challenge, I will include all of those designs in there so that you can model that PDF. And I will give you the bullet points that I want you to hit in your PDF. I want it to accurately communicate who you are. Do you put your picture on your PDF? Up to you. Did I want Jessica's picture on her PDF? Yes. I felt with Jessica 
that her images are not as strong yet as her experience and message. So I felt by including her, I tie in, now they're good enough to buy, good enough to shoot, good enough to sell, but they're not in the sense like mine that are telling all the story without me even being there. So I needed to incorporate her whole deal. Do you understand? Whereas with mine, I'm at the level now where I don't need to, but back when I was at Jessica's level, I was on the back of my PDF. I was on the last page because I felt like if you resonated with me, you would resonate with my brand and my mission. You know, now my images can speak for themselves, but I've been shooting for 23 years. So I've got a head start on you in terms of shooting and communicating with my images, but that doesn't mean she can't communicate. So on when the workbook finishes, the workbook finishes here at men. Okay, and I will uh, bullet point all of the men shooting rules and make sure you're working towards the challenge in the workbook. The workbook's just part of the course. You'll get it over this week when I finish it. I want it to be a proper ebook. I want it to be something you flip through every day when you need help, inspiration, a wake up call, and the three points that we were talking about product, selling, marketing, we're going to talk about this afternoon. They're the ones that people wanted more, more, more of and how to design this PDF on the folio, on the last bonus chapter, I will write all the criteria that I want to create a PDF, and I will include my PDF in there so that you can model your PDF on it. Just model it, okay? And I, want, I will give you all of the points that I gave Jessica. I want to see you and your advertising. I want to hear about what your experience is. I want you to tell me in the least amount of words you can what you do, how you do it, and what you're doing for me. And I want you to tie it all together in a basic PDF. Now at this stage here, if you do not print this, if you do not pay for the printing, you still have only, it's only cost you your time. Because 50 bucks says you already have Photoshop and that you can, you're a good photographer, you're good enough to advertise your work. So this is a free medium in which you can advertise and market yourself. So that's the 29th video, bonus video going out tomorrow, and I will add that as the 29th chapter on the workbook, okay, with the criteria. So when people are going, but how, what do I do, I'll just make sure I list the criteria that I gave to Jessica so you can tick it off. All right, now, the workbook was really just to hold you accountable and at a flip, you can go to any chapter and get what you need from each chapter in the fastest version. And when you have the time that night, you sit down and watch the video. So if you're doing a posing two, three, and four, you can flip to the two, three, and four posing page, get the bullet points that you need to remember. Remember, they're all on the same plane. Remember up and over, remember weight on the back foot, all of those basic rules. Remember hands, connect through the hands, build a triangle. There's a diagram, there's an image to show you. And that night you can watch the video, that video, and then you can go into your shoot tomorrow and you can master it. That's what a workbook is for. So I'll put all of that in that criteria on the 29th video. Okay, so from here, Dun, dun, dun. So Sue, I just want to make sure that everybody understands what the workbook is okay. because you have spent the entire weekend putting this together. It's going to be over 100 pages or something of the sort. I've done, I did 32 hours on it so right. far, just pulling the images and looking at the criteria of each challenge and then really just bullet pointing what the challenge stood for. Like right. I can say it to you, but this is what you keep yes. as in you work through it. So right. it's so a it's work a action book. So there are like checklists, there yes. are, do you Te guys have any questions? Because there are some questions and I just want to oh, make sure yeah, everybody understands. All right. So people are wondering when you talk about our, like for example, LV Photog, is the voucher template included in the workbook or is it just an example of it in the PDF? And same with the folio at the end and the PDFs. Is it, is it the PDF itself? There are no templates. There okay. are no marketing templates. The marketing templates, we did 28 templates for showreels. That were still, they part still of that yes, course that you and could they, purchase. Yes, and they still exist in showreels. Right. Um, you don't need a template to do a full page bleed. Okay, what you need to learn to do is how to extend a background if you're not shooting horizontally. So you don't need a template to design that. 
and you don't need a template to design that. Um, I did put a highlight there and a shadow there like a magazine, but that's your choice. You do not need to do that. You can just do white one side, and the, and the text I just apply on Photoshop. So T for text, short, pick a font, and I went to, there's a million font places that I've bought my own fonts for $3 and free fonts, and every font website has free fonts as well as fonts that you buy. I think I spent $24 and I got something like 40 fonts, all different, all magazine style because that's my look. You can be more flowy, you can be more trilly, it's up to you. You don't need a template to do this, you just need criteria. Jessica did not need a template to create any of this. In fact, when you look back, yes, Jessica has a logo, but I don't have a logo. So Jessica managed to do this in a morning, on Saturday morning, without a template. And so when I look at that, that was her logo on a white page, full bleed image, extend that background, just so that it's not a box. And full bleed image, full bleed image, extended background. So this was shot horizontally and background was extended. And all you have to do in Photoshop is go canvas, size, extend the canvas and it becomes white, go to your brush tool, sample the background, marquee tool, edit, fill, foreground colour, done. And then clone it. You don't need a template for that. You don't need a template for full bleed images and she certainly didn't need a template for that. So she's sassy enough to do that on her own and then chose a colour that matches that, like an ink, instead of it being white. So that's smart. You know, two fonts, much better than five, Jessica. Simple, easy to understand, and she's working on those prices. So you do not need a template to design a PDF. You need 10 of your best images, eight is good. You need to simplify your words, your packages, and make sure that the images you're using are accurately describing what you do. So that workbook will have all of that criteria in it, but you do not need a template. Okay, secondly, that workbook, when you buy the course, the workbook for me is this reason. I'm time poor, constantly time poor. Like That's the story of my life. So when somebody says to me, I've got to do a shoot tomorrow, family posing, I'd have to go to the family posing video and watch it. I would have to allocate the time to do that, or I can pull the posing manual, that comes with the workshop, or I can um, pull a workbook and the posing manual, have a quick reference, and then I have all three options. I'm working through the poses, I have the manual there, most of the shoots come with a printable manual, you don't have to print it, it can stay online, you just download it, and that in itself is worth more than $1.99, so that workbook is just an easy reference for me. That's great. Thank you so much um, for clarifying that. And I'm all about are, product. Exactly. People are saying, um, uh, Yasmin says, oh, I can't wait for the workbook. And then Christina uh, Kipola, Chipola says, I've never been so excited about a book. <laughs> but then um, GMP says, the workbook is a great idea. I won't have to flip through hours of video to find exactly what I want. And so again, like you said, it is complimentary. It is just another way, a reference guide, yes. where you can look at it bullet points in addition to having that And then video, if you need so. to go in depth, you can watch right. the video, because each video is broken down to an hour anyway. So you can go straight to that day, video challenge 24, mm. look at the challenge, look at the bullet points, and then go, right, I'm gonna watch that again for my shoot tomorrow. All right, I, thank I, you. I can't make it easier for you to learn. Like I can't, that's how I learn. Okay, I need to visually see what I'm doing. So when Aaron has produced this workshop for me, Aaron is so different in his brain than me. He's a producer and an organizer. I'm a creative, visual creative. Okay, so I sat down with Aaron for the very first time a few months back to produce a workshop, and I drew diagrams of where I want to stand, what I want on the wall, what I want to say, I keynote, and I diagrammed and drew the entire creative process. Now, Aaron doesn't work in images, he works in words. So he looked at my process and was like, I do not understand this woman. Then he took what I gave him and he wrote an Excel sheet and he sent it to me. And when I opened it, I felt this pain lance in my <laughs> temple. And I was like, I can't even read that. I'm sorry, I did not know what you were talking about. And we laughed and then we learnt 
he works in that format and I work in a visual format. That's how I learn. It's also what I see is what I learn. So I figured that if I made it that easy, you could reference it, you could thumb through it, reference it, watch the video if you need to, and then it's right there for you in your archive any time for you to reference. Okay, so it just it's the fastest way. And I will make the PDF um, your final challenge. I will make that on the 29th. I will write all the criteria for it. If you email me your PDF, I cannot critique it. If I critique yours, I have to critique 11,000 others. I cannot physically do that anymore. So, I mean, there's, there's no way to actually open that up because even if I said, give me $10 to critique it and I'll spend, you know, the rest of my year critiquing your PDFs, I, it's not what I want to do or where I want to be. So you just have to learn the bullet points and work your way through it and then see if it works and ask the people. But really, what I did ask Jessica, and this is interesting, I said to Jessica, the first question I asked her is, when you designed this PDF, were you happy with it? And she said, yes. It wasn't until I pointed out what I thought was obvious flaw that she realized there was a flaw. So that means you're going to get tripped up in designing your PDF and you're going to think you're communicating a certain way. And so there's only one way I can really describe this. And, and I don't know if this will resonate with you or sit comfortably with you. The truth is, is how you feel about money and how you feel about your service and your brand and your product, how you feel about the give and take, the ebb and flow, whether you're seeing struggle or positivity or abundance or opportunity, how you feel is going to somehow translate in your PDF. So um, I didn't need to know anything about Jessica before I saw that PDF. I could have read it um, because that's what I do. And now you all read it the same way, but it's subliminal to some of you and it's obvious to others. Because it's my thing, I read it immediately for its faults and saw what it was saying. It was selling money, not photography. So it was very easy for me to critique. So you need to find somebody like me that can look at the mood of something and say, this PDF is speaking this way to me. Do you understand that? Am I being too esoteric or... That's, I feel like the feeling and energy around it, the energy around the PDF was definitely giving me a feeling of you know, pushing monies away. Like I feel like I'm being really like, mm, but it is a mood. Why do you look at some brands and are repelled by them? And why do you look at others and feel just distinctly drawn to them? Why do you look at something and say, I want that? It has created a feeling of desire in me. I want that folio. I want to be part of it. I want an experience like that. If my folio just reeks of beauty and desire and wanting that, yours can too. Uh, maybe that's how I feel. Maybe that's translated and what I project out through my media. Maybe that's why I refuse to write bitching, whinging, or moaning comments on Facebook. You're not interested in hearing me bitch or whinge or moan. You're interested in either being amused by me, laughing by me, or sharing something with me. That's what I want to be. That's who I want to be. That's what I want to give. It's very important that that translates through. Who has followed somebody on Facebook or Twitter and then unfollowed them because all they do is bitch and moan? Oh my God, I followed this really high profile photographer in our industry and I don't know what it was because I tried rereading her tweets but I actually went to her Twitter feed and just read a hundred tweets because I was like every day I get this feeling when she tweets that it's a horrible feeling and yet she's not necessarily saying much but it just seems to be negative. Like Even when she says something positive it has a, na a, a snarky connotation so I went and I read a hundred tweets. Go and read your last hundred tweets. Read them like a story. Read your last hundred Facebook status updates. And you will hear either negativity, bitchiness, yeah but. You know, reread it. It's intriguing. I did it. I copied my last hundred tweets and I read them as a, as a story. Like I read them just like a sentences. And that accurately tells me where I'm at in my life. You wait until you do that. That is the feeling people get around you. Okay, so if you're telling me, you know, blah, blah, blah. Also, be very careful what you write in forums. 
because that very accurately describes where you're at as well. Because I believe if you're seeing it, you're being it. So if you think people are ripping people off, you're ripping people off. If you think there's no money out there, you think that. If you think people are being possessive and stingy, you're being possessive and stingy. So careful when you reread it, it'll give you a fright. Now, so I'm going to put the PDF on the end. Let's move on. Marketing is the ability to share it. The ability to share yourself. So once you've created that PDF and you think it accurately describes your brand and communicates who you are, now you have to share it with people. Who do I share it with? Don't you love that? Who do I share it with? The average human being has 648 friends on Facebook. It's an average. Some of us have more, some of us have less. But if you are looking to build your Facebook and you have any profile whatsoever in terms of being either a photographer or joining any group stands to reason, you are going to have people on your Facebook. You need to decide, is my Facebook for business or is it personal? If it's personal, then you do not accept clients onto your Facebook page. You open a business page. If it is business, you no longer post personal quotes. I get personal on my Facebook page, but I don't get as personal as I would if they were just my friends, okay? So I'll write something that you might deem as being personal or funny or stupid or on the nose, but I'll do it in an amusing way. I always want to put a funny spin on anything I do because I'm quite quirky and I stupid things happen to me. I tuck my skirt into my tights, I fall over, you know, people have random experiences and I enjoy sharing them because I, I marvel at how crazy my life is sometimes. Um, so if you're going to d differentiate between a personal Facebook and a business Facebook, I'm telling you right now, your greatest marketing right now is, been hap is happening on your social media. Now, not everybody has a social media personality. Okay, some of you simply do not come up with funny things to say. You're not that clever with things to write. You're not posting your images in a way that's connecting and sharing and building a community. If that is not your thing, stands to reason you're probably not a blogger either. So I can only hope if you're not a blogger and you're not smart enough to come up with a quirky spin on your social media, that you have other skills in other areas. And if not, you might want to go and get a job. It's okay, you know, it doesn't mean you can't be in our industry, it just doesn't mean you're going to stand out advertising yourself on social media. You need to find another way to do that. There are millions of ways to work in our industry and not be self-employed working from home with your own social media. I mean, my social media, my business page hit 34,000 hits this week and my personal page is at 5,000 with 10,000 subscribers. My um, Twitter is at 13,000, nearly at 13,000. I'm like, I speak to a lot of people when I tweet and Facebook. But, you know, can I just say, um, I got 12,000 likes on my Facebook page a year ago on my first Creative Live. So that means the other 22,000 have come over the 12 months that I've been actively pushing that. Like every day, I Facebook twice. Every single week, I put at least two to three images on my Facebook because images bring more people than, than quotes, than writing. Okay, so you post your images, on, and I don't mean 20 images, just one from a shoot, talk about it, link it to your blog. I actively pursue followers on Facebook and Twitter. Um, unbelievable resource for connecting, networking. If something happens to my computer, I just put it on Facebook and I have 150 answers in five minutes on what to do. Like I find that community for me amazing to build and I'm gonna keep building it and giving on my social media. You can do the same. It's up to you, but you do need to differentiate. All right, so marketing is the ability to share what you've created. Now, it seems odd to me that you would wanna be in business as a photographer, you take photographs, and then you would put a PDF together to advertise who you are and what you do you would not put yourself on that advertising in any way, shape or form. You would not feel comfortable about the price that you were putting on it. And that then you would feel awkward about putting that out there um, and showing people what you do. Isn't that an oxymoron? You know, it's kind of crazy, right? You love being a photographer, but too scared to show anybody your work in case they criticize it. Um, you want to be in business, but you're not prepared to tell anybody what you're worth, so you're not really in business. 
So that's what you need to decide. To get the balls to do that, I had to be at rock bottom. I had to put myself out there, do or die. I'm down to my last 20 bucks. If I don't make this happen, I'm dead. I'm getting a job. So I must try, I'm trying to understand what you think your block is there. So when I talked about self-hate and the horrible voice of self-hate that comes up whenever you feel challenged, then you go to the video and watch the fear video. It's had over 4,000 views in the last four weeks and it's an hour long. I mean, it's, it's a, I watched it. And you know what? I watched it and I learned something. That, that chick, <laughs> she really hit home when she talked about a small mind. Because when I heard her say that, I was like, I have a small mind. I think small in my goal setting and it's time I opened up to a bigger goal setting. But to have the confidence to do it, to have the fight to do it, to have the fight to say, I'm going to not only make a PDF that shows my best work, I'm going to price it, I'm going to feel comfortable with it, I'm going to believe it, and then I'm going to put it out there. And if anybody tells me it's shit or it sucks or it's not good enough, I, I will just accept that the worst thing that somebody can say is this, you're not good enough to make money, you're not good enough to put that out there and you're not worth $800. Ooh, ouch. Don't you already say that to yourself? So somebody else is going to say it out loud to you and all of a sudden that's unacceptable. But you say it every single day to yourself. And that's okay. Stay at home. Keep saying that to yourself. Don't put it out there so that nobody else notices that you suck and you're not worth $800. Because what they will do is you will hear it from someone else. You will acknowledge that those are really your thoughts. You will acknowledge that you're the one that believes that. Suddenly that will shift inside you and then it will be gone. And then you will sit there and go, remember when I first started putting this out there? and I thought I was shit and I wasn't worth $800 and then a few people told me I was and then I realized it wasn't that bad when they told me and that was the worst thing that could happen to me. And then you realize that you're the one saying it and if you just go, oh, that was self-hate because that's my place of fear is when self-hate comes up, tells you you can't do something and then you realize that you can and it has nothing to do with you whatsoever and it has nothing to do with fear because there is no fight or flight response. There is only action and mirrored behavior and I was just seeing in other people what I believed in myself. And as soon as you address it and hear it, you no longer feel it. It was like when I did my first creative live. I always talk about this. What was the worst thing you could say about me? She's got no education. She's fat. She's old. She photoshops her images too much. She is uneducated. Yeah, I thought about what, what were the worst, most horrible things you could stand in front of me and say? And I was like, how do I know that? Because those are the things I say to myself. They were what I was saying before I got there. I'm too old for this. I've got to stand up in public. I, I should lose weight. I'm not good enough. Oh my gosh, people probably think I shoot glamour and that I'm really shallow and pathetic. And I told myself all of that. And you know what? Somebody did say every one of those things. Across the year, somebody did return every one of those um, insults to me over some platform and when I heard them I was like oh that's okay I get that you would think that because I'd already reconciled it in myself yes you are shit and you are not good enough you decide that once you decide to get over it you'll be fine and you know what it'll hurt when somebody says it it's like a really really hard bitch slap but not as hard as the bitch slap that I will give you if you don't try all right and not as hard as the bitch slap you will get when you fail because you were too scared to ever put yourself in the position where you would hear the worst part of yourself because you're already saying it. You're already saying it, you're already living it. And that'll stop you. So you will find your value and your confidence this month and you will put it down and you will hear the worst that somebody says about you and that'll be one or two people because then 20 people will tell you the best and they will tell you also the truth because there's truth in something that everybody says. There's truth in the negative, there's truth in the positive. The point is not to be swayed by either. 
You're the best photographer in the whole country. I know, right? Your shit, you're not worth $800. I'm going to give up. You're the best photographer. You know, neither are true. You're not the best. You're not the worst. You're just doing your best. Turn it into service. Make it happen. Your shoot session. If you are not educating your client with that PDF on how much you cost, and then you show your product and you give service, you do that at the shoot. You don't do that in your PDF. Your PDF is to introduce your dollar amount and show the experience of what you give. The rest is done after you've enticed them into your studio. Okay, and then with our viewing and sales session, if you have failed to educate them on the cost of your product, or you still have blocks around money and value, which we're gonna go through this afternoon, we're gonna smash some money blocks, then you're gonna struggle. Let's talk about it. 50 ways to market your business. Here's 20. Okay, I've got it here, 20. But I could write a book called 50 Ways to Market Your Business. And I could design 50 templates to market your business. Do you want me to do that? Do you want me to make it that easy for you? I'll do it. If you want me to do that, I will do that. I'll make it my next creative life. Hell, I'll stay on creative life <laughs> until I watch this industry start achieving the way you should be. But I tell you something right now. I could do that for you. I could do it tomorrow. In fact, it would bring me great joy. Marketing excites me now because I'm no longer afraid of it. Like any creative, it excites the hell out of me. You know, as a photographer, when you get a client walk in and they're really hot, really hot. Like there's this cute girl and then there's, holy cow, she's got 20 outfits and she looks at you with big open eyes and you know when the camera goes on her, you're shooting the folio of your dreams. That's how I feel about marketing. That feeling you get when it's like, this is going to be so easy. <laughs> and now I used to be terrified of marketing. And now I'm like, 50 ways to market your business. I can think of it right now. I was just like, 50 ways. There are 50 ways to leave your lover. I keep thinking of 50 ways to market my business. I get so excited by that. I will nail that book for you. I'll put 50 templates in it. You know what? Nothing will change for you if you don't shift inside. Nothing will change for you. You will not put it out there. You will not finish the design. Until you confront why, you will not do it. Okay? You will not put it out there confidently. You will be afraid, even though you know there is no fear. Uh, you will still choose to stay in self-hate instead of push it aside and say, if that doesn't matter, self-hate, I'll do it anyway. You will stu still choose that. You will have a book of 50 templates that you have paid for. And nothing will change for you until you shift your own mind about money, fear, value, and confidence. And we're giving you the tools to do that. You've had the tools to shoot it. You've had the tools removed for your fear. This afternoon, we're going to remove your money blocks. Your fear and your money are the two things. The two things are stopping you from walking that path, walking that true path. And you've got to clear it away every day. Default set, clear it away again. When I asked you to do a 50-50, everybody has, can you think of one friend that you would ask to do the 50-50 shoot? Is anybody here does not know a photographer? Does anybody here not know a photographer? You don't know any photographers? I am going to do a trade with a videographer. Like we've already Great. scheduled it. So you're but done. I don't know a photographer. <laughs> no, well, videographer is even better. Yeah. So you do, you know a videographer. Uh, but you know what? Our community is pretty tight. Like, in your area, if you ask me, so I need a 50-50 trade, I'd Facebook that for you and get you 20 photographers that would 50-50 trade you. Um, I wrote 4 by 4 shootout. Do you know what that means? Uh, grab three other photographers, hire a makeup artist, two makeup artists between you, cost you about $75 each. Go to the best studio of the four of you and shoot each other. Feel the poses, practice the poses, do a shootout on each other, build a folio, use the folio, critique each other's images, retouch together, build a folio on your own images, use a profile shot on your PDF or advertising, shoot it out together, do it as a group. Because you can't tell me that you guys don't share, you guys share everything. That embed with Sue page is incredible. You could go on embed with Sue and ask for a photographer in your area and you'd get 30. The good thing about us is we're everywhere. <laughs> because 
everybody's a photographer these days. <laughs> Be less concerned about the photographer on Groupon that's selling a $39 Groupon and giving away 50 images. They will not live long and they will not feed themselves for long. That's not your business. Stay away from the negative critical and just focus on what you're doing and how you're doing it. So I want you to go and make your 50-50, book it now, 4x4 shootout, book that in and have fun doing it. All right? And protect yourself. Sign a model release. Work with each other on what's good, what's not good, what we want, what we're doing for each other. All right, let's talk marketing. When I built my business, I gave away free gift vouchers to get people in the door. I have an a la carte menu that started at $180 for a 5x7. After the first two years, I removed the 5x7. I realized that the person who was most afraid of starting at 275 was me. Okay, I gave away free vouchers and a free makeover and I employed a makeover, uh, I employed a makeup artist full time and it was all or nothing. I had to make it work and I couldn't even afford to pay her a wage. So I said, for the next two months while I'm building money in your training, can I pay you $100 a week? And she said yes. So for eight weeks, she worked for $100 a week, and within two months, I could afford to pay her. Then what I did was I trained her to be a retoucher. And we gave away 1,200 vouchers because I went to 10 businesses in my local area. Remember that story? Then what happened was we photographed them all. Fast forward four months down the track, we've got $80,000 in the bank and we have got no shoots booked because we were so busy shooting and retouching and learning how to sell, we'd stopped marketing our business because that's what happens. You just go in big ebb and flows. And all of a sudden, I went to send out 10 more letters and I didn't have anywhere to send because I'm from a small town. And I saw lack instead of opportunity. So there's 180,000 people in my small country town and I had exhausted the local gym, the local spa, the local hair salon, the tanning clinic, the nails. Who would I ask next? I had not built a relationship with those businesses. I had used their database and stupidly not followed it through with anything. So do you think they were happy to see me again? No. What did I give them? Nothing. I didn't build a relationship or a network. I was young and stupid and I didn't know the difference. Okay, it wasn't that young, I was 33. So the whole point was, is that I got to this marketing plan out of pure desperation. I stood in my studio and I thought, right, marketing is creative and I have a creative brain and surely I can think of a creative way out of this. So that's when I got the 20 bits of paper and I sat on my floor and I said, give me 20 avenues to market my business. And I wasn't looking at a how. Just give me 20 avenues. And I wrote this, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, Hallmark holidays. Okay, what's coming up next, everybody? Mother's Day. Mother's Day, how soon? One month. Okay, one month. Who's designed a marketing campaign for Mother's Day already? Okay, four of you? Five of you? Okay, five of you, ready to go? I haven't done mine yet, but this is usually about when I post it on my blog from last year and say who's starting their Mother's Day campaign and you will go, oh, Mother's Day, only the biggest free Hallmark holiday advertising opportunity of the year for free. You could do a Mother's Day PDF for free, pull out the best mother and daughter images you have, blog them, talk about them, tell stories. I could write a story about Victoria. She's a mother. I could write a story about my mother. I could write a story about pretty much anything to do with mums and start putting that out there, linking it onto my Facebook. But I'm not going to put on Facebook, mother and daughter special, $75, six weeks. Because once you've thrown that out there, you can't keep throwing that out there. That's spam. So what I'm going to do is talk about the mum. What does it mean to be a mum? Find amazing quotes and images on Pinterest, link them to my Facebook page with the source from where they came from. You know, talk about the mum, why the mother and sh daughter shoot is so powerful, why it's my biggest selling genre, why I love shooting it so much. Talk about being a mum, choosing not to be a mum. I'm a, I'm a faux mum, I'm an auntie. Okay, it's called a sparent. I'm a spare parent. Okay, 
I'm the one that gives the children too much sugar and excessive gifts like iPads and iPods when they're seven and eight years old. By the way, my seven-year-old nephew, I bought him an iPod and he smashed it the next day. But this is the best part. Here's Auntie Sue. I'm giving my little, give the baby some iPods and here you go, you can have one too. And he looked at me and he goes, I wanted a truck. I just spent $375 on an iPod, so I put it behind my back and I said, well, I can go and buy you a $20 truck if you want, and he thought about it. I should have known in that moment. He didn't want an iPod, he wanted a $20 truck. So I'm a sparent, but that still makes me a, a pseudo mum. That makes me a faux mum. I love my brothers and sisters' kids like my own children. If something happened to one of them, I would take them. They would be my own. I love them like my own. So I'm included in the Mother's Day. I'm a parent. I can think of a million ways to spin it. I could think of my friends who have lost their mums and that they don't get to have them in their photographs or their generational photographs. And any of my friends would tell that story. I photographed this beautiful girl and afterwards she bought a glamour shoot from the 80s that she had with her mum and she's since lost her mum and that's all she has of her. And it is the most beautiful thing, this glamour shoot of her and her mum. I mean, how priceless. I could talk about that. I mean, think about it. I want you to spin me 50 ways. Now, I just gave you at least five really strong avenues just for that one there. So when you tell me there's no opportunity in your marketing, let's look at it, some, let's look at it further. Charity functions. I just did a beautiful video for Jill for breast cancer. I could pretty much go to any breast cancer charity foundation in the world right now and give away gift vouchers there. It would be my honor to do that and not to the women with breast cancer, I could do that as well, but to the people that are there to support breast cancer, the paying clients. I can go to expos and pay to be there, and if I'm going to an expo and I find out there's gonna be five other photographers there, I find out who they are, I find out what they're selling, and I make sure I am different to them. In what way? Do your research. Don't just turn up and not be good enough. Turn up and be the best. Okay, I can do private events, luxury raffles, gift bags, champagne parties, online gift vouchers, gift with purchase, social media. Social media, um, I've just put as opening an entire avenue. Okay, YouTube is the second largest search engine on the planet right now, and most of you did not make a show reel. Most of you did not even go to the effort to make a slideshow to music, which potentially would have cost you $40 to upload and you could have hashtagged it, um, you could have tagged the hell out of it on your website, on yourself, and linked it back to your website. Most of you did not even go to the effort to do that. Okay, YouTube is the second biggest search engine on the planet, and Pinterest is the third. Pinterest now is so strong, now that they are taking video, it actually overran YouTube's share last year. So more people are on YouTube, but more people are sharing their Pinterest videos because you can just pin straight off boards. I'm not even on Pinterest, because I don't have a studio team here. I work on my own and I travel. I can't even fathom starting another social media, and yet that social media is becoming more powerful than Facebook. Wow, all right? So luxury raffles, incentives and reward programs to your current database, to your staff, to the people around you. Referral systems, a community book, database alliances. How do I approach another business? You, for starters, go there and shop. Now, at some stage, no matter how broke you are, you need to either get your hair cut, you need to go and do something, you need to you know, buy something small. If you are a consumer, you will get more attention in a business than if you cold call them and try and pitch and sell something. So you have two choices. You can walk in as a consumer confidently and say, hi, what was that? I'm Jessica Adler, boudoir photographer. Bam. Okay, not, hi, it's Jessica here and I've got this really great opportunity for you to give away vouchers to you and they're already out. Cold call, who wants a cold call? Nobody. But when I pay to get my hair done, the person doing my hair has my undivided, I, I have their undivided attention. And when they say, what do you do, Sue? And I say, I'm a photographer. That's it, I'm already done, home and hosed. Really? How interesting, what sort of photography do you do? Like this. 
Okay, I call it pamper marketing. Really, it's just about marketing on the periphery. Marketing yourself and putting yourself constantly when you're in a position to meet a new market. Now, Jessica was like, how do I break into a new market? You don't have to break into a new market. You break into a new market every day. When you get into an elevator, the people in your elevator are a new market. When you go to a business, when you go to a hair salon, they're potentially a new market. When you go to the gym, the people at the gym, the people going to the gym, they're potentially all new markets. Right there, question? Um, my biggest fear when it comes to marketing is no response. And I've my Mother's Day special, when I posted it, people liked the images. They said, oh, I wish I had this with my mom. I wish I could do this. N one inquiry. OK, did you give away a gift voucher for them to come and do the shoot? So it was a, the perfume gift with purchase that you did. Same yes. idea. So $300 mother-daughter shoot with the perfume. Okay, that only mom. works in person, the gift with mm. purchase. Why do you do a gift with purchase? So that you can leave with something. Okay, it only works when you're buying a shoot and taking the perfume with you. It doesn't work on social media. Yeah. What works on social media is you connecting to the mother and daughter shoot and then connecting to the stories and everything about it and then finding a way to collect the interested people so the people that is oh my god this is a beautiful story send them a private message with a hundred dollar gift voucher and so then do it come and do it with me but you're never going to get a gift with purchase across social media that's spam the gift with purchase only works when you're actually there paying for something why would i pay for that because i'm going to get an eighty dollar bottle of perfume oh my goodness thank you and then you're walking away going, I got perfume and a $300 photo shoot. So like out of, you've done big... Expos. Expos, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the gift with purchase with the perfume, we sold close to 200 vouchers that weekend and 200 bottles of perfume. Hmm. Okay, so um, think about how you would shop online. What would, what would it take to get you in? And you know what? If you did do really beautiful mother and daughter shoots, told stories around it, created a competition, gave away gift vouchers, whatever you did around mother and daughter, and you were not getting any response just from your Facebook, you need to go and talk to people. Now, as a photographer who's launched a business, there are women's groups. You can go to breast cancer. You can go to charities, fundraisers. They have amazing dinners where you can go and speak for 10 minutes or half an hour. You don't even have to pay for this. You can go and join those networks in order to talk about it. The first thing I did when I went to um, the Gold Coast was struggle when I first moved there. And then I went to a woman's business group and they said you were not allowed to solicit yourself in the group as they told me after I got there and I'd bought like 100 vouchers in my bag. So I thought to myself, you're not allowed to solicit. So you're not allowed to go to a woman's group and pound on all the other people there. But then I thought to myself, hang on, I can solicit myself in another way. What do you do, Sue? Uh -huh. I'm a glamour portrait photographer. And then I showed my card and they were like, oh my God, can I keep this? Was I soliciting myself? Yes, I guess I was. But I didn't do it in a way where I was making people feel like they were being sold to. I did it in a way where I just told people what I did and I just happened to have a kick-ass voucher. You know, I booked a group of women sitting at my table that day that spent $7,000 with me. And that shoot saved my bacon because I was down to my last dollars and I was ready to go home. I had really gone back to a mentality of lack, struggling with money, watching money drain out of my account and I can't do this. So I had put myself in that position and I was failing at it. And that shoot really saved my bacon. So at the an event like an expo, you actually sell the voucher for yes. how much? Well, there's the thing. My gift voucher is worth $190 because it's a double makeover and photo shoot plus $100 to spend on photographs. Sorry, $290. The value is $290. And so what I did was I sold that package for $79. And I figured nobody would pay $79 for something they weren't getting, so I gave away an $80 bottle of perfume, but I bought it wholesale for $38. So I figured there was a mentality there, and the mentality was I bought 200 bottles of per uh, perfume for $38, and we sold 179 double shoots at $79, and we sold 179 bottles of perfume, and then the rest we gave away, the last 21 bottles we just gave away, they stayed in a box in the studio. 
And the point was is that people felt like they were getting something for their money. That's when a gift with purchase works, when somebody is purchasing something and getting a gift. Because if you look at it from the social media aspect, you were selling money again and giving perfume. You weren't selling portraits, you were selling perfume. Why would you want to buy perfume that I haven't smelled online? Would you buy a perfume online? Have you never smelled it before? Why? Why wouldn't you buy a perfume online? Come on. You can't smell it, but I... You I wouldn't buy a perfume you can't smell. Yeah, right. You wouldn't book a photo shoot you don't see, mm. would you? Mm. And you certainly wouldn't book an experience you nobody's showing you. Show, don't tell. Don't tell me your perfume was worth buying. Let me smell it. Okay, so you chose the wrong medium, but the right track. Mm, it's all right there. Let's tie it all up. Okay, staff incentive, rewards program, faces, contest, referral system, billboards, um, business networks, multimedia product, YouTube. Okay, the, f the strongest thing that I could do in my business, whether you're a la carte, whether you're a package, is to create a gift voucher if you need to get your shoots cranking. You need to create the gift voucher. The gift voucher is the conversation that everybody's been struggling with because everybody says the same thing. What if they come in and do the makeover and, and they don't buy anything? Okay, that might happen to you, but it will not happen to you 90% of the time. It'll happen to you maybe once or twice. At that stage there, their shoot and their makeover has been paid for but they still have to purchase their images. So if you educate that well, they will purchase their images. They're just getting an incentive to come in. What happens if they do the makeup and don't buy the photographs? Then you either fail to educate them or you fail to take photographs that they want because that did happen to me once or twice. And every now and then you don't take the photographs that people think they're going to get and they won't buy from you. That's the law of averages. That's okay. Let them go. But the, the free voucher was the single fastest way to get people into my studio. So what if I did a Mother's Day campaign and I gave everybody a complimentary voucher? The trick is to stay away from the word free. Nothing is free. It's not a free shoot. It's a complimentary photo shoot and it has more value when it's given away from a third party. Okay, because that means they paid for it, not you're giving it away for free. And that was one of the ways I built my business. Then as I started to do expos where people were touching my product and seeing it, I could start selling my product, I could start selling that shoot at a cheaper cost and I still then put a gift with purchase on it. I became a gift with purchase. So for Mother's Day, go to a florist, go to anywhere you would think of a Mother's Day gift and ask them for everybody who spends $50 on flowers, can I give you a $200 voucher to spend money in my studio? Now it doesn't have to be for a free shoot and free makeover. It just needs to be money towards being spent with you as a photographer. So you could just give studio money. Like you could say $200 to spend at suebrice.com. And if they look and say, well, what am I going to spend for $200? I'm going to say, well, that's going to get you a shoot and $100 towards photographs. And then I'm saying, you, it's paid for the shoot, you're going to get $100 towards photographs, and then whatever you buy after that, you already have a complimentary shoot and $100 off. Good play on words, right? Okay, let's talk about that, because I know that that's going to be a subject everyone wants to say something about. Also, do you want to charge for a sitting fee a bigger amount and then upgrade your packages or do you want to charge a lesser amount for your shoot? You see, I've never, even when I've charged for a shoot, I've never really charged for a shoot because when I do the $79 with the perfume, um, that's a cheap amount but I've never done that more expensive amount for the shoot because I always felt that if they paid $190 for the shoot, then they have to pay me again when they choose their portraits and I feel like they're paying me twice. So to me, it was either a complimentary gift voucher or a $79 sale with the package educated in with that service. And that was one of the questions I had. Do you feel that since you started out with the gift voucher that you kind of make yourself have to go down that road? Like I'm afraid that if I start with the gift voucher, 
everyone's always going to expect that. They're never going to want to actually come. Everyone that you've already photographed will expect that. And everyone you've already photographed should never pay you for another shoot. Okay, because so you, everybody you have always already photographed should get free access to you all the time to rebuy. And the point is, is that anybody who has seen you as free and then sees you as priced was only like, oh, are you doing any more of those free vouchers? But they'll never say, oh, I was going to go to her. She used to be free and now she's $79. Will they? Because right. that's not what happens. Right. So you're pretty much dedicating yourself to do the vouchers, but knowing that if you're doing it the right way, they're going to come back to you anyway. But... Um, for any new clients that you bring in, you're always going either the voucher route or a gift with purchase, or is there always some kind of... Yeah, spin. There's always? There's always a spin on the come in, because it's something everybody wants to do and never gets around to doing. And you don't just wake up tomorrow, even when you've got limited income, and say, I think I'm going to go and spend $2,000 on photographs tomorrow. You see the experience and you go, wow, I've always wanted to do that. I get the opportunity to do it. And yes, I love them so much. I bought them and I'm paying them off. That's just the way it goes. Yeah. So would you recommend that we send free vouchers to our past clients? No such thing as a free voucher. No, but the complimentary yes. session vouchers. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? Those people spent money with you. Every year, I send them a $300 gift voucher. So what would be the excuse? Like, should we send it excuse? on their birthday? No, but us, like, suddenly out of, a, out of the blue sending them cards. A gift? You're a valued client. Okay. Here's $300. Little Johnny must be so grown up now. Here's $300 towards your next portrait shoot. Loved working with you last year. Warm regards. Cool. Hand write it in a card if you have to. Nobody hits their current database. Nobody. I see it hundreds and hundreds of photographers n all doing the same thing, none of them hitting their current database. All right, Sue, and just so you know, I think we have about only 15 minutes yes. before our next break. Okay, cool. So, um, Brenda from Brazil. Where in Brazil, Brenda? We'd love to know. Um, my struggle with the gift voucher, which I have been using, is they have no commitment to come in because they didn't pay for it. Even if you talk to them about the outfit, etc., if something comes up the day of the shoot, there's no commitment. Then you just lost a shoot. Yeah, you did. And that's exactly right. Even if they pay, they sometimes don't turn up. But very rarely does that happen. It does happen, though. You just roll with the punches. Unfortunately, that is the way of it. Well, and not believe that that's going to happen every time. Yes. And, you know... It's like, again, I say it a million times, how many dress shops do you walk into? You try on a dress and you don't buy it. Or you just, you know, you just don't go to an appointment. You had your hair, you had every intention of being there, something came up and you cancelled your hairdresser at the last minute. Okay, what happens is we hold so tight to that photo shoot that when we lose it, it's game over, life's over, they didn't turn up, I'm clearly not good enough as a human being. It, and I know that you were probably relying on that income. Just because somebody booked with you with a free shoot doesn't mean they're going to turn up, doesn't mean they're going to spend money. That's life. I found that when I got more money in the bank, I cared less about who showed up or not. In fact, when I got more money in the bank, it didn't matter if they showed When people would cancel, I'd be like, oh, yes, I get a day off. I actually thought that when I got more money in the bank. And I realized there's a very different mentality when you've got money as to when you don't. And I'm going to talk about that after this break because that is a huge one. Another comment from the chat room. Leslie M said, did the gift with purchase a few weeks, oh, I did the gift with purchase a few weeks ago at a trade show and gave away bottles of perfume exactly as you did. And it failed. Most women were so excited that for $80 they got a perfume and a makeover with their best friend but were not interested in the photo shoot. What did I do wrong? Okay. Um, did she take really good photographs of them? Did she advertise it as a free makeover, double makeover? Did she put the word free in there? Did she advertise the makeover or the photo shoot? Mm. Did she show behind the scenes of the shoot? Did she show the price list of the shoot? Did she give it and say, this gives you $100 to spend on photographs? Because then the only reason that you would not get that is if you didn't deliver the photograph. Nobody takes the time to come and get their hair and makeup done for $80. Trust me on that one. It's not worth it. People don't do that. You can go to the Mac count of a 30. 
It's just not. You just do not do it. What they want is they come in hoping they'll get great photographs. If they don't get it, you've fallen down in one of those areas. Which one? If she goes back, tell her to, to break it down. What's it? I'm going to tell her. It's, was it free? Did you say the word free? Did you advertise the makeover but not the shoot? Did you show behind the scenes of the shoot? Did you show before and afters of the shoot and process? Did you show the after package right then and there? Did you give the price list right then and there? And when you booked the shoot for the perfume and the makeover, did you sell the shoot or did you sell the free makeover? Because and when she said it failed, I want to know how many booked. I want to know if anybody spent or if they all were no sales and how many were no sales. Because in order for it to fail, she would have had to have had how many people buy perfume, how many people turn up for a shoot, nobody to purchase, and she still didn't fail because they paid for their perfume. So she actually failed nowhere. She just failed to make any sales out of it, and there was something she did wrong, just like Jessica saying, it wasn't my fault. So if she breaks it down, I guarantee you, and she ticks off those boxes, she went wrong in one of those areas. The way she sold it, the way she communicated it, the way she offered it and what she offered, and then did she ask them how they want to be photographed? Did she deliver the product? And did she show the product that she was going to deliver, or did she make it about the perfume and the makeup? Because it sounds like they got excited about the makeup, they got excited about the perfume, but they never got excited about the photos. Mm -hmm. So she either didn't deliver the, the service, or she simply failed to educate them on that they were going to have photos taken. She was just so busy giving away the perfume and the makeup to try and entice them. In fact, I would go so far as to say that she didn't believe her product was that good, so she tried to sell her product by selling the perfume and the makeup, and that's why she sold perfume and makeup that day and not herself. In fact, I would go so far as to say that when she did it, she probably felt in herself that if she pretties up her shoot by giving away makeup and perfume, then she can avoid the fact that she had to sell herself at all. And do you know how I know that? Because i already done it. Been there. If wow, I lovely. Just, if I avoid... <laughs> If I avoid the fact that I can't value my own work, I can put a whole lot of pretty bows and bells and whistles on it, but I do not value myself enough to sell myself as a photographer. I've been there and done that. And you know what? I sold a whole lot of perfume and pink bows and not a lot of photography. Well, I'm excited to hear what Leslie has to yeah, say. Yes, so do I. You're not safe at home, everyone. Yeah. You might think that you're safe at home, but you're not. <laughs> You are not safe at home. You are not safe at home if you were talking to me on that chat. <laughs> Any questions? Isn't it funny? We're talking about marketing and what does it come back to? Value. Can't market anything. I talked about fear. I filmed a talk about fear. We put it up on the course page. It's even on YouTube. Uh, I, it's easy to find, it's on my blog. It's an hour long. I'm going to listen to it again. Um, when I wrote that keynote, that, that was the only notes that I took. I figured that there were, these were the blocks. It came down to failure, apathy, non-action, small thinking, negative voice, self-hate, a victim mentality, and competition and ego. Those were the, pretty much the words. Everybody circled their one word. Um, mine was self-hate and small thinking. I've dealt with the self-hate. When it comes up, I stop it. I've been in competition and ego. I've been a victim, not one anymore. Um, I've had the negative voice, which is really just self-hate. Um, I've done the apathy and not action, which is really just victim mentality. And failure is not really a word because you don't fail at anything you learn. So is failure really failure? No, she didn't fail at all. She just learned to listen and she'll now correct it and then she will win. You don't win either. <laughs> it's just work. <laughs> all right, there's neither. So the truth is, is that was the only thing I wrote. I spoke for an hour about that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to speak for an hour about money. And I'm going to speak to money the same way I spoke about fear in a really confronting, uncomfortable way that's going to make you assess how you feel about it, how you attract it, what you want with it, why you're struggling with it, why you're giving it away, why you give it away, why you don't receive it, why you don't think you're good enough to have it. And then you're going to go and do what I did when I first heard all of this. You're going to go and change it and attract it into your world by selling your photography. But before we go to the break and we do that, this is the last chance you get to talk to me about marketing and I need you to talk to me about this. 
in order to hold myself accountable in a studio that had all of these um, staff, I wrote a one-year plan for my marketing that was based on a linear timeline, and that was that there. That timeline held me accountable throughout the year. The first one, the dark blue line, see I even colour coded it. Oh and by the way, just a heads up, everybody sees my Photoshop videos on, um, on 28 days and they're like, how does she get those rainbow colours? So if you're in Photoshop and your actions are press play, you need to go to the top right of that box, of your actions box, and there's like four little lines. Press that, right click on those four little lines and hit button mode and it goes to button mode and you can colour code them in rainbows like mine. Most people don't know that and then you hear a collective ah around the world whenever I uh, say that because I get so many questions about that. I hold myself accountable by going, these are the different types of marketing that I can do throughout the year in my business. Celebration marketing, um, which is really Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day and Christmas. And what I'm trying to do is hit Mother's Day for May about here so I can action and start a Mother's Day voucher, a Mother's Day PDF, a Mother's Day campaign on Facebook and start doing that four weeks before, which is right about now. Everybody's going to start their Mother's Day campaigns this week after they do their pricing PDF because you're not going to have a PDF to send out if you don't do both. However, what you could do is a pricing PDF that's around the mother demographic, which is either family first, 50 plus, or the mother and daughter shoot, plan it for Mother's Day, get that out there, and then you've got a month up your sleeve of shooting incredible mother and daughter portraits until you have to redesign the PDF without mothers and daughters, and not to mention the amount of folio build you're gonna get over the next month. Oof. Then, Father's Day is the least interesting of the four. And not because uh, it's Father's Day, but because, you know, at the end of the day, Mother's Day is easy campaign, and Valentine's Day is an easy campaign. But Father's Day is not as big as the other th uh, four, but it's still a free Hallmark holiday. A Hallmark holiday dedicated to a billion, billion, 30, $332 billion revenue around the world will occur on that day there. And you can be part of it by simply designing a voucher and starting to put those stories out there. The second one was show marketing, expos, trade shows, audience orientated, gift with purchase, and that was about Girls' Day Out, the home show fashion week, and big boys' toys. These expos cost us between three and $10,000 per expo, but this one here would net us around $180,000. This one here would give me enough work to get to July, because Girls' Day Out is an expo for young women and I would get the young women come in with their mothers and that's where I marketed the perfume expo giveaway on site. Home show was just about homewares, fashion week, great expo, not as big in revenue. Would cost us around $4,000 to be part of and it would net us around 70,000, half of Girls Day Out, half the cost to be there. This line here, most of you cannot, cannot do in a studio, is afford to buy these expos. I'm talking, this was in the second year of my business. Taking $10,000 out of that first $80,000 in our first year of business to do that show was a huge risk for me. That was, you know, huge risk. But I did it, and it was a massive chunk of our first income, and it paid off exponentially. However, I was smart. I looked at my competition. I chose to be in the best position place. I looked at who they were and what they normally offer and what they would offer again. I found out what colour their stands were because I asked the show organisers. They were all black. I went white. I put white glossy paper on the walls and made it look like white. I couldn't afford the white glossy walls. You know, that was like another four grand. I was doing my MacGyver Kiwi Ingenuity. Um, they all had lots of small framed images. I chose eight massive 3045s mounted. I took the white leather couch from the studio. I made it look different. And then I bought the perfume. And I blitzed every studio in the expo that year. And they knew that I was in town. And because that's the difference, right? Is when you study it and you want to be better than everybody else. And you want to bring something to the table that everybody else didn't have. Charities, events, fundraisers, private public events. This was all about business to business alliances and then that was multimedia product that I was creating. And 98% referral rate, viral marketing campaign on Facebook. This down there when I wrote this, so this was not close to eight years ago, this is now at the top tier. Okay, so eight years ago I wasn't on Facebook and yet I had written this as my one of my streams of marketing. 
So really interesting, isn't it? So when people say how, let's start with your PDF. Let's just start there. Start by designing it and communicating it well. All right? Once you've finished that and you get that out there, then you can start looking at all of these other avenues to share what it is that you do. And if you are communicating that accurately, you attract based on what you're enticing people to you, and then you get the opportunity to service them, prove it to them, sell it to them, make income. Um, the only thing that's going to stand in your way here is any blocks that you have around value and money. So let's address them next. Right, marketing questions before we go? Can I uh, follow up comment from Leslie M? Yes. Who said, Sue, in all caps, Sue, you are so right, we did not sell the photography. She says, I did love the photos that were displayed before and afters were great. great. Did not give a price list. It was so much easier to sell a makeover. <gasps> she You're was right. selling someone else instead of herself. Yeah. She stood there and sold bloody perfume and makeup. And she, the worst thing about that is she did it so greatly. That's what she did. She sold perfume and makeup. And never once did she sell herself. Oh, I know that feeling. I know it, and then I watched the perfume and the makeup people just thrive, and I got nothing. <laughs> I, Leslie, I hear you, I feel your pain, but you are worth more than that. Do not cloud your studio, do not cloud your service with hair and makeup. Add it as an add-on to an amazing package that is you, and that is your beautiful before and afters. I cut her off, what else did she Leslie, say? you really got Sue fired up here. Um, she said that she sold about 20 bottles and followed up with all the people. Only six wanted to actually come in, and she's still in the middle of those shoots, so she does not have the full results yet. Okay, so she didn't fail. She got six shoots. Yes. She has the opportunity to turn that around if she shoots them well. If she listens to them and communicates them, she could get $1,000 average. She's made $6,000. She could do that. She could get more than that if her prices is structured well. I don't know what level she's at, but she has not failed. In fact, she has learned the most powerful lesson of them all. She has the power to sell. She just sold somebody else instead of herself. Now, if she turns the power into her own value to sell herself, then she's already there. All right? She is already there. We all have the power to sell when we believe in something. She just didn't believe in what she was selling, so she sold something else. Is that obvious? Was that obvious when she said it? I did the perfume thing. It was an epic fail. No, it was not an epic fail by any stretch of the imagination. Do you want to take one more question? Yeah. Okay. One final question. This is from Bridget Lopez from Florida. What if a client, a prospect wants to book but has a specific budget that is lower than your break-even charge and tries to negotiate your product and price? Would you still offer the voucher and experience and hope that they will purchase more? No. Why would I? I am what I cost. So if my bottom line is 1200 and they try and negotiate 900 I have this joke whenever, because I'm a la carte, so I'm not putting a price in front of people. So people would come into the studio, and I had this one woman come into my studio, and she said to me, I know you're expensive, so I've got a budget, and it's $1,000. And I could have shot to accommodate that $1,000 budget and just let her go early, but I thought, no, you watch. I reckon when somebody tells you they're going to spend 1000 you can at least double it, if not triple it. Because if somebody's already telling you they're going to drop a grand on you, then they're going to drop three grand on you. Like, are they telling you that before they see the photographs? And so I photographed this woman and her daughter, and she was just a peach. I loved this woman. She came back in for the shoot without her daughter, which is awesome. And I started selling to her, and she goes, I'm over my budget, right? And I was like, yeah, you are. And it was $6,300. And she goes, how far over my budget? And I, and I went, $6,300, because I was a newbie photographer shooting in my garage. It was one of my biggest ever sales until the week later when I did my first $9,000 shoot. And then I was just like, I, I had garage roller doors, remember? Like, those ones, you know? Not like, yeah. I was like, dig, 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 bang, with like cobwebs up the sides. I used to roll right up so nobody would see that they were actually garage doors, and then the doors would be open. So I had to put a screen up to, oh my gosh. So I did $6,300, and she's like, I'm over my budget, right? And I was like, $6,300, and she was like, oh well. And I remember thinking, 
I had never done anything like that. But the truth is, is when somebody tells you a price, you can just say, oh, but my package is 1200 and trust me, you don't have to buy it if you don't like them. Oh, that's a big one, isn't it? The idea is that I'm a photographer and I've got to take a photograph of you that you like so much you want to spend money on them. And my package is worth $1,200. I feel really comfortable with that. So when I photograph you, you're going to say, oh my God, these are the best photographs I've ever seen. And it's $1,200 and you get 42 images or whatever your package is. And you sell it and say, but trust me, I'm going to try and blow you away so that you have to give me your firstborn or remortgage the house. Make a joke out of it if you have to, but value it until they say yes. And if they say, I can't afford you right now, say, ah, next time you know where I am. But, you know, it's like internet dating, right? You look, you look, you look. No, no, oh, I like that one. Maybe it's a right fit, maybe it's not. But, you know, the other ones that you passed over aren't crying about it. It's just numbers, business. Money. Let's talk about money. Isn't it funny money is such a um, desired and sought after evil? Isn't it funny that we call it an evil? Um, okay, I grew up with no money. And I had no money throughout my, uh, most of my life. So it wasn't until I was in my mid-30s did I ever start to accumulate money. And I first learned to earn it. So I always earned my earned my wage but my wage was between four and maximum eight hundred dollars that's where my wage was and that's throughout my lifetime as a photographer so even when I did a seven thousand dollar shoot in my 20s my boss got to keep that money and I resented him for it because I didn't understand that he was just playing an average I just saw seven thousand dollars for my photography which essentially I got $50 for. So I had no concept of money in terms of commerce, money in terms of business. I had no concept of money, and I was also an overgiver of money. So uh, very over generous with my money and never received money, never received it very well and always struggled with that. So it would flow out very, very fast and not come back very, very easily. Um, I also grew up in uh, a family of blue collared workers who were very hard workers and we we're all very hard workers, my entire family. My little brother struggles with money, my big sister struggled with money, but my big brother never did. Never did. Even as a kid, we would be given $2, $5. I would go and spend mine within the hour. My dad used to say to me, it's burning a hole in your pocket, isn't it? It's burning a hole in your pocket. And I would have to go and spend it and my brother saved it. Always, he was the same with his Easter eggs, he was the same with anything he was given as a kid, he kept and I spent. As we grew up, he accumulated, because he's a hard worker, but he's a blue collared worker, saver. And I was a blue collared worker, spender. Then he went from becoming, being a butcher to a builder, and as his income increased, he built wealth through buying homes. Now my brother has bought homes and bought, he's bought three homes and I had bought none. And I had flown to stay with him every, twice a year for seven years, which equates to around $37,000, which was a deposit on a home. I had always spent my money on things that were valued to me, travel, living a lifestyle, owning stuff, you know, and I spent my money quite happily on what I valued and what he valued was accumulating. So he accumulated and if that meant he couldn't come and visit me, he wouldn't, he would see me eventually anyway. So I started to get resentful about that. I fly to your house twice a year, I spend all this money to come and visit you and your family, you don't spend the money in return, instead you buy houses. And then I realized that that wasn't so much, it was what he valued. I valued spending time there with his children. He valued talking to me on the phone, but he valued buying houses more. And I realized that it had nothing to do with how we were brought up, 
because my mum and dad were not accumulators, they never had the value for themselves and my brother somehow got this gene and I realised in that moment some people have the money gene naturally and some people don't. So you can just sort of strike that off and say I'm always going to struggle with money, I'm a spender, I'm an overspender, but the truth is, is there's a vast difference between how I think about money and how my brother thinks about money. You see, when you go to my brother's home, whether he owns the homes or not, the three homes, they do, he does not have the things that I have. He would never spend $10,000 on a couch. Instead, he spent $2,000 on a couch. My couch is 10 times better, but he put his money elsewhere. So it's reflected in what's around me, what I own, what I spend my money on, what my values are. I realized very early on that I like nice things. So in order to have nice things that I've paid for, not on credit, and to have nice things at all, I needed to earn more money than my brother. Because he saves more than me, but he goes without more than me. So in order to earn more, I had to open up to earn more. Now everybody wants more money. Everybody sitting in this room right now wants more income, correct? No matter what your income is, even if you're comfortable, you would like more. And yet the truth is, is what are you prepared to do for more income. So when everybody says I've set money goals to earn more money, you want to get paid more? For what? What are you going to do to get paid? Are you going to give more? Are you going to create more? Are you going to make more? So I think there's two ways to make money. You can either be a service provider or a product maker. A service provider means that when you're giving a service you're getting paid. When you don't give that service, you don't get paid. So as a photographer, when you're giving a service, you do not get paid if you're not shooting. So when you go on holiday, your studio does not make money unless you have more than one shooter. Correct? Then you can go on holiday and the service you provide is still running. That's business. Now most people aren't at that stage yet. So you don't have a business. You have a job. All right, and your job means that only when you work, you get paid. Now, until you create a subsidiary income that supplements that wage, you will only get paid when you give the service you are giving. So if you're giving away that service for $250, then it stands to reason you're not only, only getting paid when you do the service, you're not getting paid very well to do that service. So when you stop working and you don't get paid, you're going to suffer because in order to not work, you have to accumulate enough money in the bank to cover the times when there's no income. That's commerce, that's business. So I realized very early on that I needed to employ more photographers and my studio grew. What happened is I stopped shooting and I let other people shoot and I started to die inside because I realized that what I loved doing the most was being taken away from me and watching other people do it not as well as me hurt me greatly even though they made me the most amount of income I made third year of business $880,000 in turnover three photographers well two actually my business partner stopped as well but I was dead inside, so earning that sort of income did not make me wealthy. Do you know why? Because we were turning over income in order to pay a big lease, to pay eight wages, and at the end of the day, I never made more money. Okay, I was still personally getting paid 50000 a year, which is $1,000 a week. I was clearing $1,000 a week with all of my bills paid, so I was sitting pretty. I could pretty much just bank that and live on it. So I did what I always do, I lived on it. And then my studios made close to $2 million in its first three years of business, and I'm debt free with maybe $50,000 in the bank. But I've made nearly $2 million, but I am not accumulating any wealth. I'm not buying, investing, or investing my money in things that will get me more money. I have not gone on a wealth track. I simply have learned to create a better paid job. And I can now take a holiday because my studio is still making money when I'm not there. 
And I think I'm on the high life. I'm like, I've got money, 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 money. I'm doing it. I'm rocking this lifetime. I've got money in the bank for the first time in my life. I've got money in the bank. One, I hated my life. I had started to, I'm, I was a full-time manager of 10 people, nine including myself. I couldn't manage myself very well, so 10, one really difficult one. And I had money in the bank, but you know, once I stopped working, that money just drained out and was gone. And just like that, in my fourth year of business, I found myself back to square one again. Because I left my studio in New Zealand and moved to Australia. Two reasons. One was for love, and the other one was to start a new studio in a country, brand new country, big, 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 big population. I went from four million people rocking a studio in country New Zealand to open a studio in Australia. I was there a week and I broke up with my boyfriend. So I was in a country that did not know me. I had $50,000 in the bank and I failed so badly, it wasn't funny. I instantly came back to a feeling of competition, defense, ego, and scarcity. How would I get known in this market? It's too big, where do I go, what do I do? Even though I had done it, built it, I had not addressed any of my personal issues around money, and I found myself back to square one in a country that did not know me, draining money out of my account. And this is what happened to me. <laughs> oh my goodness. I had $180 in my purse and a client owed me 300 bucks. I had spent over $50,000 out of my savings account and I'd been in Australia for one year. Every single sh uh, shoot I did, I got blocked, money drained out of me, people would cancel their orders. I could not understand why I was attracting from this place of scarcity. And every single day I would wake up and say, I hate my job. I hate doing what I'm doing. But I would do it. So here's the cool thing about the universe. You can't ask the universe to send you work and then tell the universe that you hate it and repel it, because that's what happens. Uh, I had to fly to the Gold Coast for a job. I had, I had $180 in my purse and a client owed me 300 bucks. I phoned her, sorry, that's a lie. I emailed her, because I would never phone somebody and ask them for money. I emailed her and said, could you put that money through tonight? It's very important. She emailed me back and said, certainly I'm doing it right now. I paid, I think, $68 for a cab to the airport. Could have taken a $20 shuttle. Didn't think about that. Got to the airport, paid excess baggage on my computer equipment, on my camera equipment, on everything to go and do the shoot. And I'm at rock bottom. Okay, I get out of the airport at the Gold Coast, I've got $5 in my purse, and I go to the ATM, and that woman never paid me that 300 bucks. I've got $5. This makes me cry, it was Valentine's Day. <laughs> One year. I remember the date. I was like, Phew. there I was, built this million dollar studio, with five bucks alone in a country where I didn't know anybody. I couldn't call them to pick me up. So I sat down on my bag and I started to cry. And I had five bucks in my hand. And I said, universe, you have to help me because I don't know how I got here. And I'm, this is it. I can't go home. And I don't know what to do. Say, so help me, because I don't know what to do. And I had my head down, and I heard this pshh. And I opened my eyes, and there's this big bus, double doors. And this guy, the driver, he goes, you right there, love? And I said, do you go past 19th Ave? And he goes right past the front door. And I said, how much? And he said, $3.50. And it, I realised in that moment I didn't have 20 bucks to catch a cab to my destination and it was seven miles away. It was about 92 degrees and I had about 90 pounds of luggage with me and a camera bag and I was prepared to take my running shoes out and drag my bags seven miles in that heat 
because I had no option. It never occurred to me that I could catch a bus. Because I think in cabs. So here's this angel of a man looking at me with this beautiful smile on his face and I hand him my five dollars and he gives me a dollar fifty change. And I get on the bus and clearly I've been crying. I'm distressed looking. It's Valentine's Day. And he drops me off and right before he drops me off at the stop, this woman says, yours, yours is the next stop, love. And I said, thank you. And I got off and I walked in and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm at rock bottom. I'm here to do a shoot and I'll probably get paid for it, but I don't know when and I don't know how I'm going to eat because I've got a dollar fifty. But I believe that when you're at rock bottom, there's always enough or there's always something that gets you by. There's always something. I believe that. So I go to the apartment that I'm staying in that the woman who I've flown up there to shoot for, and it's a $1.6 million apartment on the waterfront on the Gold Coast of Australia, a property most people could never afford to stay in. I laugh at the irony. <laughs> I open the door and there's a note and it says, you know, um, I realise that you've flown in late in the afternoon, you probably wouldn't have time to get any supplies, so I've bought you a week's worth of food. <laughs> and so I did what most women do when they're in a state of distress. I ate just about everything I could in the pantry <laughs> and then drank the wine. Then I lay down in bed for two days and I cried. Uh, I cried for myself, for being a loser, for going backwards, for finding myself in the same situation, for wor wondering how I'm going to get the next five dollars. And I lay there and as I lay there this thought overwhelmed me and the thought was, I did this. I did this. I chose to come to a country that nobody knew me and instead of going and marketing myself with confidence, I chose to sit at home in a state of hate, ego, competition, apathy, victim mentality, fear and self-hate. And instead of showing people my beautiful work, I instead I imbued it with self-hate and said it was horrible and I can't do it and why would I do it and I was prepared to give it up and go and get a job and then I remembered what I had built and I remembered why I had built it and the reason I had built it was because I'd hidden behind other people and I had not faced any of those issues with myself. So I sat there in that room and I said, I declare out loud to the universe, to whoever is listening to me right now, I make a decision that from today on I'm going to be so brave and it's going to frighten the hell out of me but I have nothing to lose. I'm going to walk my true path, I'm going to do what I want to do, I'm going to believe in it because I don't have an option to starve or ring my mum and dad at what, 38 years old and tell them I need a ticket home. No, it's not going to happen and I can do it and I believed in it right in that moment I said it out loud and then the next day I got I woke up and there was a shoot an offer for a shoot on email and I responded immediately and then rung the woman because she'd given me a phone number why wouldn't I ring it because I was too scared to talk to people or well, this time I rung it and she said, listen, I know you're here for Janet and I would like you to come and photograph me and my kids. I went to her house, I photographed her and her kids and then her friend came over while I was doing her hair and makeup myself with my own makeup because I didn't have a makeup kit. And then I photographed her outside, her own house, leaning against her outside wall and inside and on the couch and, you know, and she paid me $3,800 and she wrote me a check the next day. Then her friend that came over said, I liked her so much, can I book her? And I did her shoot as well. And then by the end of the week, I'd done a third, Janet, who had actually flown me up there and given me that apartment. And by Friday, I had $10,000 in the bank. And I don't know how that happened. All I know was that I made a freaking decision right in that moment. It was do or die. And I had to confidently put myself out there and make money. And I did not have an option. It was die in that moment or survive. And I chose to survive. And then I decided that there's survival and then there's thrival. Okay, and I had to go past a survival instinct. I had to thrive at what I believed in. I had to put a value on who I was, what I do, and I had to actively pursue it. And you have to harden the up. Because when people say no to you, you got to move on. 
And when people say, you know, I can't afford that right now, so sweet, I ask the next person. It's called shameless self-promotion. You are worth that. And instead, what you want to do is you want to hold to every person that says no to you because that means that you're not good enough. And that's not business. That is bullshit. And you are in the way of that. And you have to hold yourself that. And it's not the truth. It's not. By any stretch of the imagination, I made a decision that day. It was Valentine's Day. Do you have any concept? Two years later, within that week, that I was standing at Creative Life telling people how to do this. And that two years, the two years from my last, so that's three years just gone. My last three years, I have made money hand over fist shooting. And nothing changed but me. And you know, it just came down to getting out of my way and putting a value on what I did. I realized in that moment, I was not only egoic, a victim, apathetic, unable to take action for myself, lacking in confidence, filled with self-hate. That had nothing to do with the market. By the way, 2008, worst year in history for all of us. You know, and I turned it around. And you know, I turned it around because I just started actively and confidently deciding that what my value was. I set my package at $3,000 that week and I did three $3,000 sales plus a $3,800, $3,200. I made $10,000 that week. Then I had, had $10,000 in my bank. And I was like, I had five bucks last Tuesday. It was Valentine's Day and I had I had a dollar fifty because I pay for my bus fare. I had a dollar fifty, and a week later I have ten grand, and I have the skill to make money. You have the skill to make money. You're the only person that's not doing it. So you want money, but what are you prepared to do to get it? Because most of you would rather sleep in or cry about it than actually do the work. I did, and you know. In that moment, I was like, right, can you learn to be wealthy? Can you learn that? So for one year, my bank account, isn't it weird how you get a number and then you stick in that number? I was like $10,000. My bank account would go to $10,000 and then drain away and then go to $10,000 and then drain away in $10,000. I'd never had that money myself in my bank. Then I went to 20,000 and it drained away and then 20,000 drained away, 20,000. And I knew that every time I hit a ceiling, I would push through it. I would push through it and I would try and make it to the next block that might, and then it was 60,000, 60,000, 60,000. Breaking 100,000 was easy because I went straight to 120. And then I was like, no, now I'm making money. Now I am making money and I'm keeping money. And I learned to ask for it and I learned to receive it. Left for leaving, right for receiving. Thank you very much. I also learned my value, I set my price, and in stone, in my own self, I set that in stone. And once I decided that that was my decision, and that was what I was worth, I just started to do it. And these are the questions I asked. Money, how do you feel about it? What do you think of wealthy people? How's this? Two of my aunties married rich men. My mum and dad, nothing. They used to look down at us. Well, I felt they did as a kid. They used to have homes where you couldn't sit on the couch because you weren't allowed to touch the couch. Whereas we had a couch we could make a hut out of. Who had more fun growing up? I thought what they had was better than us until I grew up and realized they had nothing. They had beautiful homes and nothing else. And when their husbands left them for women half their age and my dad still adores my mother, I knew that my parents valued something far greater than a couch you couldn't sit on. But I realized my, my problem with money was I thought assholes had money. Because people with money treat people like shit. That was my belief. I want you to check that. What do you think of wealthy people? Capitalist pigs just have enough. It's disgusting how much money they have, the money they spend. You need to check your energy around money immediately. Let's do it. What are some of your blocks around money? What is your fear around money? What are your core beliefs around money? All right? How can you possibly be rich when half the world is starving to death? 
Half the world is starving to death and the other half is eating itself to death. And that is the incredible polarity and isn't it incongruous that that is happening. However, I now understand that the more wealth I build as a human being, the more I educate other people to build wealth. The world is not in poverty, it's becoming wealthy. Wallace D. Wattles. I'm not going to be guilty for earning money. I'm going to show you how instead of explaining why I have it. I gave a challenge out, which I'm going to give to you, and I gave this to Kenna, and you'll be shocked by Kenna's response. I'm sure she'll want to share it because it was such a beautiful one. What you focus on grows. That applies to your bank account and your ass. <laughs> it does. Sorry for saying ass. But the truth is, is at the end of the day, if all you think about is how big your bum is, your bum gets bigger. If all you think about is growing wealth, your wealth gets bigger. If all you think about is your debt, your debt gets bigger. What you worry and obsess about grows. I was constantly fixated on what I did not have. I was constantly fixated on what I did not have and I did not know how to turn that around. In order to forget about what you don't have, you need to focus on what you do have and that's where gratitude helps. So if you think gratitude is airy-fairy, you are wrong. It is the most powerful energy in the universe. And you only need to meet people with an attitude of gratitude to know that they're wealthy because regardless of whether they have $10 in the bank or $10 million in the bank, they're freaking happy. Right? Because in the pursuit of happiness, even if you don't get what you want at the end, you still had happy moments all the way through. Is that not winning? Okay, so the fact is what you focus on grows. So instead of trying to focus on making money, Jessica, try and focus on booking two shoots a week for the next six months. Then you're trying to make goals for work, not money. Okay, then it's not about money, 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 chasing money. You know what happens when you chase money? It keeps running away from you because you're chasing it. Can you hear yourself? I'm chasing money constantly. Stop chasing it. It'll come to you when you stop running and it stops running away from you. All right, so from here, all my fear around money left when I focused on my product value. This became service driven. I stopped focusing on myself. I stopped making it about me. Okay, I've stopped making it my ego, my drama, my competition, my lack. I started focusing instead on what I was going to give you to get paid for. Because I realized something. If I try and shoot you and I make it, please just give me $600, please just give me $600, I just need $600, there's a really good chance I'm going to repel that. But if I focused on you and said, I'm going to give you the experience of your life, I'm going to give you the experience of your life, I'm going to give you the experience of your life, I'm going to take the best photographs you have ever seen of yourself, and I didn't focus on money, I focused on that energy, and you felt that, you paid for that. And whatever you paid for that, I accepted gratefully as a perfect exchange. I accepted that gratefully. And then I started to shift that in myself and I was like, wow, all of a sudden I've become a giver instead of a whinger, taker, complainer, not have a scarcity. And that's where I was. And if you don't believe that, think for one minute about how you feel about money when you shoot and sell. Because I used to do shoots thinking, God, I hope they just spend two grand. Please let them spend two grand. Please let them spend two grand. Please let them spend two grand. Now I don't even care what they spend. I just try to take the best photograph that I have ever taken this week. And it worked straight away. It started to flip around. How do you feel about money? What do you think of wealthy people? Those are the two questions. That, that'll really freak you out when you write it down. And I don't want you to just write one answer. I need you to write the answer. Okay, I want you to write down every bad feeling you have ever felt about accumulating wealth right now. Because remember what I said to you, you're quite happy to go into a job and get paid 700 bucks a week. You're quite happy to do Facebook at that job and know that you're ripping your boss off and help yourself to stamps and envelopes, and, which is stealing, by the way. Um, and if you don't think it's stealing, try owning the company. It's stealing. And then all of a sudden, you're quite happy to do all of that, rip him off for $700 a week. But when you go out into business, you can't make $700 a week because you're not worth that. And yet, thieving off somebody else and being on Facebook, you're worth that. Because somebody else is paying. But when it comes to you paying yourself, suddenly your value's drained. 
So you need to look at what you think you're worth. And if you can't turn that around within yourself, you need to turn it around for your children, for your future, or just at a basic business sense. My business needs to sell this many units at an average sale of in order to make this amount so I can pay myself this. This is basic business. Remove all the emotion and value out of it. Value the product instead of you. In fact, you're the one in the way. Does everybody understand that? So all of a sudden, there's money guilt. The world is poor. The world is poor. And yet some people have $32 million yachts. And that's gross, right? Gross wealth. Or is it? I mean, how they choose to spend their money is entirely up to them. It's not distributed wealth. If they gave all of their money to us, we would all be the same. That's not how it works. In every species, in all evolution, there is an alpha male, alpha female, the strong survive, the strong thrive. If you want to look at people who are um, accumulating wealth, look at what they're doing, and they are not sitting at home crying about how good they are not. So getting out of your own way is one of the hardest things. Acknowledging your uh, existence and energy around money is a huge, huge... In fact, when I finished the conversation with Jessica and I stopped recording, her and I started to have a conversation about money, me about how I grew up with money and her about how she grew up with money. And that conversation is more powerful than me telling her off about her PDF because that is her core belief around what she's worth and that's what she told me the answer to. So all of a sudden, that core belief around money incredibly enlightened because everybody just creates enough or enough struggle, but you don't have to do anything. You have the right to thrive. You have the right for your children to have an abundant, rich, full life. And you are not to let any excuse get in that way. So what I deserve, what I want, and enough to get by is not enough. You deserve to have excess money in the bank. You deserve a home, a safe home for your children. You deserve to have clothes that keep you warm, that, that you like, that you feel comfortable in. You deserve, if you value that, you deserve to have a fancy car. If you don't value it, don't get one. If you want to have holidays in the Bahamas and drive a $2,000 Toyota, then that's fine. That's your value. But you do not deserve to struggle. You do not. There is no struggle. That's your choice. Okay, so from here, how are you going to get paid? You can set a dollar amount, but you're better to set an average amount. And an average amount is what you're going to get from your client. So as a photographer, you are better to say, I'm going to work this year until my average is $1,800, and then I'm going to work on 100 shoots this year which is two a week, add a turnover $180,000. This is my profit margin. This is my profitability. This is what I'm going to pay myself. And this is how I'm going to survive and thrive this year. You're better to look at it like that and then turn it into business and service than you are to sit down and try to manifest money. Because if I told you right now that you needed to go and find me $10,000 in the next three days from the streets of Seattle, you would not, you'd come back with maybe seven bucks and a cigarette. <laughs> okay, but if I told you to go out into the streets of Seattle and find six photo shoots, I guarantee you'd come back with six, right? And then your average sale would be reflected on what those six people would buy. So my average sale is $3,000. So it stands to reason that I would come home with $18,000 and you would come home with how much? Whatever your average is. So if I told you to go and manifest money, you won't find money. But if I told you to go and manifest work, then I guarantee you will look for people. Because if I look for money, then I'm not looking at Valerie. I'm looking at her purse. I'm like, I hope she pays me. I hope she pays me. But if I'm looking for Valerie, I'm like, you're 66 years old. You are beautiful. I would love to photograph you. I couldn't think of anything I'd rather do. I'm a photographer. Uh, my name's Sue. I'll give you a business card. And if you're interested in doing a photo shoot, please call me because you're amazing and I would love, love, love to show you, give you my business card. I've got more chance of booking her than looking for her money. It's just amazing. The attitude of gratitude without doubt single-handedly changes 
that because you're shifting away from what you don't want to focus on anymore, what you are getting is what you're focusing on. So that stands to reason that that's what you're focused on is what you're getting. Do you understand? What you're getting is what you're focused on. What you're focused on is what you're getting. What you're getting is what you're focused on. What you're focused on is getting is what you're getting over and over again. That's the hardest thing to shift. So the only way to distract yourself from all the negative shit that you are attracting constantly in your life when you say, I'm broke, I can't afford it, I haven't got this, you have to stop and say, hang on, I am down to my last dollar, but I am not broke. My family is healthy and I have love and abundance and I have joy in my life. Now, this is one of the best things about being poor. My family didn't have much growing up but I have a family that can sing and dance and play the guitar. <sighs> when I'm near them, I just want to sing with them and dance with them and play the guitar. No amount of money would bring me more joy. No Ferrari, no mansion on the hill would ever take my family from me because my family, the they are the core of what is good in all people. But my problem is, is my family are still poor and I want to make them rich. And then I realized I didn't need to make them rich. They are rich. Some people just want more things. There's a difference between struggle and being rich. And my parents don't struggle. And yes, they don't have much, but they are so rich. You know, my dad used to say when we were little, we would sit and watch the sunset and my dad would say, oh, I wonder what all the poor people are doing. And I used to think, aren't we poor? <laughs> <laughs> and then when I grew up, one day I was with all my friends and we were drinking Verve Clicou and I was like watching the sunset and I said, I wonder what all the poor people are doing. And one of my girlfriends went, ah, you can't say that. And I realised I couldn't because I wasn't one of them. And I was like, oh, I just meant that I appreciate the sunset. And she was like, yeah, not cool. <laughs> so the thing is, is my values are different from my parents. And when I started to make money, I felt guilty about that. Because what do you do if you're becoming wealthy and people in your family have got no money and you feel guilty? Everyone's got one of those, right? Somebody that makes them feel guilty about having stuff, okay? I realized then that that was my guilt, it wasn't theirs, and I can have stuff. My family are okay with that. My, my brother thinks I should be putting it into housing. My sister doesn't care what I've got. My sister would never look at me and go, those are amazing boots, where did you get them from? And she just, she doesn't care. She's more interested in what I've been drawing lately. Or well, have you been singing? Or what groups have you joined? You know, when my business, made $880,000 that year. I was so stressed out. I'd put on like 40 pounds. I was strung out. To the, I had 50 grand in the bank. I, I went to my dad and I was like, you know, I've got 50 grand in the bank. Mm, I'm all like, you know, nearly having a heart attack. And dad looks at me and goes, cool, you happy? And I thought, you prick. <laughs> I worked my guts out for that money. And he's right. You happy? No, I wasn't. I wasn't happy at all about to lose it all, about to realize that I wasn't making money from joy, I was making money from resistance because I was trying to hold on. Wealth dynamics, I've talked about it before. In order to find the path that makes you wealth, you need to do what you want to do in order to make money, okay? That means you do not make money hating what you're doing, you make money by working through your highest values on the right path and your Wealth Dynamics profile is the profile that tells you what you are and how you make that money. I am a creator. I am at my prime when I'm creating marketing, when I'm creating income, that's when I am at my most powerful. If I am not creating images, if I'm not creating marketing campaigns, if I'm not creating PDFs, and you can see how passionate I am about them, because in the year that most of you haven't done one, I've done 50 and told you all that I can't believe how unexcited you've been by making PDFs. You know, this is where I'm at my most powerful. This is when I make money. I always talk about this too. I talk about clear vision and goal setting 
because you cannot create anything unless you have a clear, strong vision for the goal that you want to set. So if you want to get out of debt, um, in fact, it's John Demartini says the most incredible way to get out of debt is let's say you have debt that's $40,000 and he said break the debt into service. So he said and let's say you get paid $700 a shoot and you have to divide $40,000 by 700 and then look at that number and that's how much work you need to look for and then you can get out of debt because instead of having the debt loom over you, you just transfer it back into giving back in service and then that work comes to you because you're working from service instead of scarcity. And that's a really interesting way to look at it because that actually works. The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles is a free PDF. If you email me with in the in the subject line, if you email me in the next two weeks and say free PDF, I can email it to you. But if you don't write free PDF in the subject line, I'm not going to answer you because I'm going to get hundreds of hundreds, if not thousands of emails. It's a free PDF which challenges you about money and I love it. It's free to give away as long as you do not copy the content or break it up in any way, shape or form. So I've got that PDF and I'm happy to pass it on. All right. Now for me, I've showed this before, but what I want to show you is something different. Gratitude, dream big, clear vision. Okay, what if it was already there? So I drew this picture three years before I stepped on set at Creative Live. I had never seen or heard of Creative Live. I drew this on my vision board because I wanted to create a vision board for what I wanted for my future. I wrote under here an educational warehouse for photographers. I didn't write I, I write, I will own it. Okay, I did write an educational warehouse for photographers. What did I go into there? Creative Live. Look at that picture. Look at the floor. Look at the window. Look at the brick. Look at the warehouse. Look at the lights. Look at the ceiling. How could I have envisioned that? You know, whether you call it the secret or whatever, clear vision. I knew where I wanted to go. I knew what I wanted to create. How did I do that? I don't know. That's just bloody magic. How did I do that window? Why the window there? And why the floor? Why did I define the floor? And why did I write a warehouse educational facility for photographers? Why? I don't know, but that's what I wanted. So I put it on my vision board and my vision came to fruition. It turns out it not only exists, I was bought there. And I got booked, signed and advertised and in the studio before I saw the picture. And then I went like this. <gasps> I've seen this before, like a deja vu. So I go back to my vision board and there it was, even the window. And I'm like, that went, I don't even understand that. So I realized that in my manifestation in my last three years of turning around all my energy into what I want instead of what I haven't got, I started to do this. I called it the million dollar gift and I said it to a friend of mine while we're having coffee. I said, I've got a million dollars in my handbag. One million dollars. On the grand scheme of things, that's not a lot of money. Because you know it's going to buy you a home. And it's not going to pay for much after you buy that home. So I said to her, I've got a million dollars in my bank, in my bag, and I'm going to give you this check for a million dollars right now. I'm going to give it to you. But you can only take it if you start a business with it. And she was like, okay. And I was like, right. And then I got a pen and paper. And I was like, what are you going to build? You have to build a business out of it. You will be shocked at what you write. I want you to do that. I've got a million dollars for you, and it's the million dollar gift, and I'm going to give it to you to start a business, but you have to start a business that will make an income from it. I gave that challenge to Kenna at breakfast last week, and I said to Kenna, here's your money tell me what you're going to do with it. And Kenna started to list the things she would do. They involve travel. They involve setting up a foundation. They involve looking after her family and lots of other wonderful things. And all of them, everything she lists, involved giving money away. So we looked at her list. And at the end of it, I was like, that's a great thing to do with the money. What else? And she said, oh, I will look after, pay my student loan, look after my mum, you know. And I said, okay, so everything you've written was handing money over to someone else. Didn't we not do that? And then we started to look at our own list. Do you know what my list said? My list said I would do just about everything I wasn't doing 
in my normal life. This was three years ago. I want you to write the million dollar gift list and I need you to do it tonight. I want you to imagine that I'm going to deposit a million dollars in your bank account tomorrow morning and all you have to do is give me a list of the business you are going to make out of it. Do you know the irony? Is you don't need a million dollars. Because I built that business in my garage in New Zealand with $3,000 that I borrowed off my mum and dad. And I did not need a million dollars because I hear people all the time say, I've got this idea for this business model. If only somebody would give me this money, I could do it. But when you really want to do it, you just start doing it. You don't know how. You don't know how it's going to work. You don't know what the outcome is going to be. You just start and somehow it happens and it arrives and it just collectively doors open because you're filled with so much passion and enthusiasm for what you're doing. It is like magic. So you do not need a, a million dollars to start a business. But what the million dollar challenge does is it alleviates for one minute everything that you don't like about what you currently have and the situation you currently have because a million dollars frees just about everybody. It frees you from a job you hate. It frees you from a relationship that is dead, gone and stale. It frees you from a mortgage. It pretty much frees everybody. A million dollars covers freedom for just about everybody. But what I need to know is why you're not doing that without the million dollars. Because the truth is, is when you see that list, you will be shocked at what you can achieve once you see it. So here's the cool thing. When Kenna did her list, I did mine. Now I haven't done this for three years. And three years ago, I had $1.50 in the bank and I imagined that week that that $10,000 I got was a million and I started to think to myself, I'm going to pretend I own this $1.6 million home and that the $10,000 in my bank, those zeros I can see are six of them, and that I have a million dollars in the bank, what would I do tomorrow if I had no fear of where my next dollar was coming from? What would I do tomorrow if I had no debt, no fear, no apathy, only opportunity? And then I wrote that list. And that list came to fruition. So I realized then that the only thing standing in the way from me creating anything was my belief system. And I had to uproot that belief system in order to challenge my blocks around money. And when I did start to do that, I don't count money anymore. You know, when I said, and then it was 120, it, now it's just, I don't even know what's in my bank. I have a fair idea, I'm not stupid, I do my taxes every, every two months, so I know what I earn, and, but I know no longer, I don't count every cent and every dollar and every, now it's just auxiliary. It's an auxiliary income to a full passionate life that I'm now not afraid to have. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. And when you do the million dollar challenge, here's the thing. I just sat down and did mine, and everything I wrote on the list, I'm already doing. So a million dollars right now, if you handed me a million dollars, Valerie, I'd say thanks. I'd put it in my bank, and I would keep working tomorrow, because I am already on my path. And I know it's the right one, because I wouldn't change a single thing. Actually, not true. There were three things I would change. I would pamper myself more. I would take more days off. And I would go to the gym more. I can do all of those things without a million dollars. Okay? That's just giving Sue a bit more time, being a bit more gentle with her, because she deserves that. I want you to do the million dollar gift challenge. I want you to write down what you would create. I gave this challenge to my friend who's a photographer struggling in business. She's come back with an entirely different business model. Turns out she didn't want to be a photographer at all. She said, why was I so attracted to photography? And I said, I don't know. She said, maybe it was just to find you so you could free me. And I said, I didn't free you. You freed yourself. Her new business launches this month. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm, when she builds it and opens it, then I'm going to tell you that story. She learned that with me, that she would always be in love with photography and it would be 
part of what she does, but it would not be her income. And I'm so proud of her because now she's started a business that has nothing to do with photography. Nothing. And it's something she's so passionate about. How could she possibly think for one minute that she couldn't? You're going to do the million dollar challenge. After you do the million dollar challenge, you're then going to um, have a look at what you do do regarding, and then you're going to compare it to what you would do if you had the money and you are going to start focusing on that list of what you would do if you had a million dollars and you're going to move towards it every single day because that is what makes you happy and fills you with passion and you're going to forget, you're going to slowly forget the debt and then it will slowly go away because you will no longer be looking at it.